This episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast is brought to you by Onnit and their flagship product, Alpha Brain. Alpha Brain is the first fully balanced nootropic designed to increase focus and mental drive. For our listeners, get up to 10% off when you use promo code Rooster at onnit.com slash gaming. That's O-N-N-I-T dot com forward slash gaming. This episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast is also brought to you by Hulu Plus. With Hulu Plus, you get total control to watch thousands of shows wherever you want, whenever you want. Binge on full seasons and watch your favorite current shows like Red vs. Blue and more. Right now, Rooster Teeth fans can get an extended free trial of Hulu Plus by going to HuluPlus.com slash Rooster Teeth. <laughs> Singing to you. Hey everyone, welcome to the Rooster Teeth Podcast. Hey, it's a podcast. Hey, Gavin, Gavin Jack, and Bernie. Hi. I include all you assholes. What's up, internet? So hey, here babe. we are, podcast number two two four, the last podcast before I go insane due to RTX. <laughs> You're already way past that. Oh yeah. Wait, wait. Next Monday though is going to be before RTX, so you shouldn't go. Insane. I'll already be insane by then though. Oh okay. We start moving next Tuesday, so in eight days we'll begin moving in. Um, I saw you crying in your car earlier. <laughs> it was the most manly crying yeah. in the world possible, I'm sure. Crying. Yeah. So yeah, we've, uh, we're down to the nitty gritty, putting things together, getting all the last minute stuff squared away. Getting uh, Chima Hunter Lounge built with Jack over there. Yeah, the Chima Hunter Lounge is going to be very cool. I'm, I'm working on something that's going to be a nice surprise that I think people are immediately going to recognize and be excited for. So uh, we'll, we'll is, see how it goes. Well, oh, okay. Uh, it's going to be a surprise. I want so people to walk where, in and see it. Where is the Achievement Hunter Lounge going to be? It's on like the floor? Yeah. Back corner. What makes we, it when you, about it? When you, yeah, when you walk in the front door, it'll be to your right. Yeah, we have a nice big area. This year, we're <coughs> four times the size of last year's or double the size. What, your booth? Yeah. Uh, so, do we have a 20 double, by 20? I think. Double. Okay. Wait. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyone? Anyway. Uh-huh. I have a marshmallow. What are you doing? I'm going to attempt to throw a marshmallow th- in Gavin's mouth. Do it. Do it. Do it. Just whip it in Probably. as hard as you can. Ready? Yeah. That's what she said. Oh, oh that's a good shot. That's pretty good. You got, you got a lot of accuracy. Did you play a lot of baseball as a kid? What's that? Did you I play a lot of baseball? basketball shot. I made a very impressive garbage shot in the kitchen the other day right in front of Gavin. So yeah. you got to see it. You were pretty smooth about it. I was. And that's what, pull, that's what makes them count. That's yeah. like your, your field goal, right? Gavin appreciates that. When you just do something with utter confidence, yeah. or like something incredible, and then act like it happens all the time. Like oh. The amount of times inside my head where I've just been like, yeah. But, <laughs> but on the outside, you're just like, and walk. Yeah, walk away. Walk it I do off. that five times a day. You just have to be here for one of them. <laughs> I think it's your British accent that reminded me of this. But when we were doing the spoiler cast the other day, Matt mentioned how the actor who played Robert Baratheon in Game of Thrones is a, a British comedic actor. Right. He's in so the I had to look him up. Yeah, he he's, was, like, uh, he's the Flintstone. fat guy in uh, The Full Monty. Monty. He was also Fred Flintstone in the second Flintstone movie. He was? Yeah, yeah. he replaced him. Wow, and, really? He, him and one of the Baldwin brothers, I think Steve. I knew, yeah, I knew one of the Baldwin brothers was Barney. Yeah, and then uh, Jane... Not Kismeric. The, the girl who was the blonde girl from 30 Rock. Look up at IMDb. Uh, <laughs> oh. You can go ahead. Wow. Jane Krakowski? Krakowski, yeah. She's, uh, she's one of the... Uh, what she's was Barney's wife, or I guess dating Barney at the time. And then they, the other girl was the, the, the big girl from uh, uh, Third Rock from the Sun. Like the... Yeah. Anyway. Jane Krakowski also was in National Lampoon's Vacation. <laughs> she played was Cousin she? Vicky. Oh, yeah. The, the Twisted oh, wow, Cousin. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. That's was Cub. Eh. Well, well Julia cool. Lewis wasn't that. That really freaked me out when I went back and saw that. Yeah, she was a daughter, right? Yeah, she was yeah. a daughter with Michael Anthony uh, Hall or yeah. Anthony Michael Anthony Hall. Anthony Michael Hall. Yeah. Um, we were talking about this thing, though, of like doing cool stuff and then just like walking it off. I've never made one of those videos where you do the basketball shots or you do the whatever, you know, and they do that, those kind of videos where it's obviously you take like 100 takes to get it right. But goddamn, I always want to tell people, don't react. Like, don't go crazy when yeah. you finally make the shot. And these are people who make those videos, <laughs> and it's always like they should know better than, but they should know better by now than to do that kind of stuff. I well, left my who, phone on again. Who are those guys? The dude, huge guys, like the guy who who take all the uh, the basketball shots. Dude, I think dude, perfect. huge, dude, perfect. Dude, huge is that's Cliffy Cliffy B. Cliffy B. <laughs> Cliffy B. Yeah, Cliffy B. Yeah, no, dude, perfect. Those are the guys who make the basketball shots. Like they were on the 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 gigantotron at the uh, Texas Stadium, and they sank one from the middle of that. Is down. that bigger than a jumbotron? It's, it, it was, for a long time, the biggest screen in the world, and now it's not anymore. I wouldn't even say it was a long time. I mean, yeah, they maybe put it up, and they said it's the biggest, and then somebody built a bigger one. Yeah. The giant, well, that, that was like the, 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 that was like the Godzilla Tron at, uh, at Texas <laughs> Why Stadium. Why do all of these things have a stupid name that ends in Tron? Well, because it, it was the Jumbotron. Everyone's like, everyone remembers the Jumbotron. Does Tron indicate, though, a Trinitron. brand name? Like a know. Trinitron. Sony. Yeah, so, like, Sony where did this come list? from? Well, Jumbotron... They, they the should Jumbo have called the, the PlayStation Tron. I thought the what? <laughs> wasn't the Jumbotron actually like a Mitsubishi TV? A Mitsubishi TV. I think no. they made it. Well, I know, 
I don't know. I, I'm gonna do. I want a Google Tron. Etymology. Nothing can beat a Google Tron, right? <laughs> you know what I found out about those uh, Saturn Tron dude perfect guys though, which I, was an odd thing to discover, was that when you get into their videos and get into their site, they're very Christian, and that's like a big part of their whole thing. Yeah. Well, so they like pray in the videos or something. Well, like, no, but like, an it all good, style. clean, fun. In all their descriptions, it's like God enables us to do this. Oh, and really? To do this through Jesus. And That's that. weird. I'm paraphrasing their <laughs> religious fanaticism. Did you, did you see here. <laughs> over the weekend, there was that uh, thing where Nick Walenda walked over the. Uh, oh, did he do it? The Grand Canyon. Did he survive? That was crazy. He spent 24 minutes, like, 24 minutes out there walking Jesus. on, like, a fucking two inch cable. Tight rope in the Grand Canyon. With no tether, right? With like, no tether. <laughs> fuck. What? <laughs> That's dumb. So did they have a camera he, on him? Did, like, did, did they have a GoPro? Yeah, he had like two cameras on him oh. so you could see like POV. So what happens no. if he eats knobs right in the middle and hangs on? Do, do they, how do they get to him? No. Does he crawl? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, they, like, who, who did they get to go out there? Like, sure you go get him. No, you go get him. <laughs> what if I'm he sure they had a helicopter or something. or something. I'm sure they had a helicopter like off site. They, like, they said that they had a paramedic waiting on the floor of the canyon. And I was like, <laughs> why is there a paramedic <laughs> down there? It's oh. like, there's no... They need a bunch of dudes with gloves and can like trash cans to pull They should have like, a bunch in. of dudes with like a trampoline down there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they have clowns dressed as firefighters with a big circular, <laughs> like, whatever that thing is. Yeah. Or like a giant pizza scoop thing. But, but they made <laughs> oh, it a man. point to talk about how they had a paramedic down there. I thought, that's so weird. Like, <laughs> why? He was, he was like 1,400 feet. He's like, nope. medi gel yep. as he falls. Oh, man. It'd be like, there's a paramedic. He like sees the dude teeter, he's like, uh-oh, dude falls, he goes, I quit, I quit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm out of here. Jeez. So he made, so he made it though, you, you, walk, you walk across the whole damn thing. The paramedic's job is when he sees him go off the wire, he goes, time of death, <laughs> 7.30. He just starts filling out the form. <laughs> Velocity of it. He's got filled out, he just submits. <laughs> and then by the time the guy hits the ground. But yeah, there were a couple of times where like, he's going across and like, he stops and like, has to squat down. I was like, uh-oh. Oh man. Uh -oh. It was, he just tired. I guess like it was too windy. Man, it must be awful to be able to predict someone's imminent death and be like, able to state them as dead before they've died. It's like, Jesus. there's no survival there. He's going <laughs> to die. Yeah. You know, there, there's actually a trapeze place just up the road here. Oh, there's yeah. like an indoor soccer thing. Yeah. They also do trapeze. We, like, that would be fun. I would love to do something didn't like that. Just, didn't your indoor soccer and, tra and trapeze in one didn't, a, <laughs> didn't a bunch of the animators do that last season? Oh, I did think they? like Shane and Monty and those guys all oh. went out there at one time. Well, what you guys call trapeze in England, it's foot bar. That's what you guys call it, right? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were being serious. <laughs> I was like, holy shit, I learned something. No, I, I, yeah, I don't know why it's all, I don't know why they have that there. It's like the weirdest combination. Oh. They, why do you have marshmallows? They keep hitting my Oh, I have marshmallows for a very good reason. In a, sec in a second, I'll tell you. All right, guys. Just a moment. But there's, there's a couple of things. bounced off Gavin's tongue. Let's do this. Oh. <laughs> you guys are terrible. There's a, couple, there's a couple of things I want to follow up on. First of all, the term Jumbotron, sometimes called Jumbo Vision. Is a large never called Jumbo Vision. No, never. never. I'm telling totally you to call it Jumbo Vision now. No one's yeah. ever called it Jumbo Vision. I'm going to be a large screen hipster. Isn't I'm that what Jack <laughs> Black had in that movie? What's that? <laughs> Shallow Hal. <laughs> Shallow Hal. <laughs> I guess he had the opposite. But uh, uh, I'm also going to start calling Cinema 2K. I'm going to start doing that from now on, just to be like a hipster for this kind of stuff. But it was made by Sony, which would make sense because Sony okay. makes the Trinitron, which is probably the name of Jumbotron. And then they said, they, they, they call out here a, a trend as genericized trademark, which I guess is that thing that happens where something becomes so synonymous with the thing, the name of the brand becomes the name for all the things. Like, so what's like Band-Aid, kind of? What? Like Band-Aid? Like Band-Aid's one. But is what? that not the brand? It's not all the company. But when you say, I need a Band-Aid, you don't need, I, need, I want specifically a Band-Aid brand adhesive Or, or even in the South, you say, I want a Coke. Like, what kind of Coke? I want a Dr. Pepper. Is there stuff like that yeah. in the UK? Like, Hoover. there's... Hoover just means a vacuum. Yeah. And you never, vacuum is not vacuum said. Vacuum cleaner is rarely used as, a, you, you go and buy a Hoover, even though you're not buying the brand Hoover. Thermos, we learned that one. Thermos yeah. flask. Hey, so, okay, so, so there you go. Ther we were talking about this just recently. Um, <coughs> where did you guys, where did you guys talk about thermos? Was it on the podcast when I wasn't here? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I was, I was talking about one and I was like, imagine if you had a thermos flask and they were like, a thermos. I was like, yeah. But calling it a thermos flask is, is weird here. Well, this to me is like, it's just so, it, this is a Thermos brand water bottle that I have, but Thermos, to me, is the most synonymous brand that is the thing, because if you had a Thermos, which is a brand name, what is it? Like, that, that's the discussion we had. Yeah, oh, it's okay. a vacuum flask. It's a flask. vacuum flask. 
vacuum. Like, wow, you guys talked about this. Yeah. Really? That's really uh, bizarre. Apparently, Bernie loves listening to the podcast. <laughs> I thought really. what Fuck, we're learning. When, when I'm not on it, fucking, you guys can feel good about tuning out too. <laughs> Just feel fine. How did we come back to the same fucking conversation? <laughs> that is really weird. That no, is really weird. All right, so we're talking so, about marshmallows. Wait, wait, no. So you were finishing. Jumbo Vision, Jumbo Tron. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Genericized trademark. Yeah, and so I guess the Trons have just like. It, like has stuck since then. Like, Did they take it from the movie? I don't know that. No, Trinitron is a brand name. <laughs> yeah, but was was Tron the movie out or was their TVs out? I first? think Tron was taken as like that a general electronic term, like, like Electron. Like, yeah, oh yeah. And Electrons were around before <laughs> Tron the movie. We had Electrons. He fights for the users. Neutron. But talking about the dude, perfect guys too. They were just showing me before we went on the air. They were showing me uh, um, another popular kind of gimmicky. YouTube channel is FPS Russia, where he does guns every single week. He does guns. <coughs> and they, look at this. Have you seen this clip? Yeah, I've seen this one. Oh, it's my crazy. God. I haven't seen this before. Yeah, look yeah. at this clip of FPS Russia firing a suitcase gun, which apparently is some kind of rocket launcher at a, at a truck. No, he, ha- he has Tannerite in the door. I guess we need it. What's Tannerite? It's an explosive. It's like okay. Tannerite, right? It's important yeah. here. Just watch what happens to the door. The, yeah, what? Oh. Yeah. God! Ew. That door almost takes his legs off. Well, if it if it had hit him, it would have <laughs> delimbed him for sure. Yeah, absolutely. That would have removed that would have removed his body. That's uh, <laughs> like, yeah, it would have ended him. It's pretty violent. You you hear a dude in the background who clearly can't believe what just happened, and then he's just looking, and he just, could, he just look carries at that. on look like look how nothing. awesome he is. Just mud. <laughs> he just carries on like nothing happened. Yeah, <laughs> it's like you're talking about like just be cool. Yeah, that's, man. I've never I've never seen somebody be I, that cool under pressure. I wonder if afterwards. He kind of just like sat on the ground and was just like, I almost died. That went almost straight through me. It's good that it's framed up pretty high so you can't see that he says like urine running all that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he might not have even seen it. It might have happened so fast. Like he might have blinked because of the explosion. Well, yeah. you see him turn away like way after it's gone past yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's some of the craziest thing about like slow-mo guy stuff is like the explosions and then like it'll go past you and then you react to it. Like I remember when you had the water balloon, you just filled yeah. up to capacity. That was actually that was a pre slow mo guys one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, all the rubber from the balloon had already like, yeah, like flung off and stuck to my face before I'd even blinked. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Yeah. What, Someone you, tweeted at us, for fuck's sake, Tron is from Greek meaning device. Oh, there you go. Well clearly that's is it. for fuck's sake. For fuck's sake. Come on. You so it's jumbo that? device is what it is. Oh, here's oh Gus, you should see this one too. So we were trading videos. This is not the, all video stuff, but this is a video that's on Live Leak of a construction accident. Uh-huh. And guys, I showed this to them. This is the weirdest freak accident. A dude actually does get killed as a result of this, but you don't actually see anybody get hurt really okay. or get killed in this video. Probably oh, yeah. somebody I like hurt. Yeah. He dies. Right. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. So which guy gets hurt, Gus? So right. which is the guy who gets so hurt here? This guy. And here, then go the ahead and play it. Play yeah. it. Yeah. Play it. Who are you, who's pulling the down the guy in white. Gets, the guy, guy in white. white. All right. Obviously, who gets hurt, right? Guy in white is the guy in the middle. This is the weirdest freak accident. <laughs> I just so, want to point out that it's a brick building. Yes. And that'll become relevant in about 10 seconds. <laughs> Watch the truck on the left bouncing, trying to pull this thing down. You can do it. Oh, so man. Like, no. You can do it. There it goes. Uh, all right. And down it goes. Watch out, guy in white. Oh, oh. God. <laughs> Man. So for those of you who can't see what we just watched, they pulled down part of a building. But he's like right the, there. The guy stood right yeah, there. I think he's I th- or that could be somebody else coming. I think he's dropped the camera. It's a brick building that they're pulling down a section of the flooring <clears> from. <throat> and as it lands, it twists and it just like... All the bricks just separate. Like in a, it flings them in yeah. one direction. It just like twists and flings all the bricks in one direction like right at the camera. And it's a rain of bricks coming at you. At it's about, like the joke you told me before the podcast. Oh, yeah. Well, now, now, it's, now it's ruined. Oh, yeah. What's red and bad for your teeth? Bricks. <laughs> you <have> bricks. Oh. <laughs> so the, uh, yeah, so that guy is uh, um, probably in a lot of pain. Tron is from Greek meaning device. That's from official Garwood. There you go. Not unofficial Garwood. Yeah, not that unofficial. That's the official, <laughs> let there be no imposters. So is, oh, wait, is that like the most narcissistic <laughs> pretentious thing? Well, I just want to point out the tweet underneath it is just dicks. <laughs> <laughs> to like name your account official when there's no unofficial, like no one could possibly or be the, making the real account. whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think I played Halo with that guy before. <laughs> really? What? Official Jason, Are you sure? Uh, was it officially Gala. him? He uses <laughs> the same. You, you think there's someone who uses the same handle across like Twitter and Xbox Live? Like anytime there's a new platform. Like social media or gaming, he like that's me. I gotta take. Yeah, it. I, I used to try and do that all the time with my username. We were Gavi. What were you, Gavino? Yeah. yeah, but then people started just registering on stuff before me. Mm. Yeah, that happens a lot. My, uh, what, my full name now is, all, is always taken. Yeah. Like, I want to talk about this stuff, but at the same time, I don't want to talk about it because it just incites people to do things, you know? 
Yeah, someone, someone emailed me over the weekend. I shouldn't be mentioning this. <coughs> someone emailed me over the weekend and was like, hey, I, uh, I registered the official Rooster Teeth Vine account. I just thought you should know. I was like, what? Yeah. He's like, yeah, I'm running it. I was like, no. Yeah. Like, I was like, no. He was like, don't do that. He's like, oh, okay. Hey, I run uh, an official SpongeBob Vine. Do you think I should, do you think Nickelodeon would be cool <laughs> with that? And I was like, how the fuck do I know? <laughs> do you want to know what official means then? Yeah. Give that to me too. I have a weird thing in that I don't really care that much about it, especially on services that I don't use. But then they build integration tools that are fucking stupid. And they don't build in for weird cases of that. Case in point is Instagram. The guy, there's a guy on Instagram who has, I guess, at Bernie. What are the, what are the Instagram names? Are they just whatever? Yeah. yeah. Just Bernie. Yeah. He has Bernie. And I had Bernie Burns on there. Um, but my Twitter handle is at Bernie. Right. So when people tag him on Twitter, it translates it to me. Or no, when people tag me on Instagram, it translates it to him on Twitter. Yeah. So on Twitter, you get a tweet saying, oh, I'm hanging out with Barbara, Gavin, and... Chasing Daniel. Chasing Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, inadvertently attended so many events. Like. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, it was, and it was funny because uh, Phil DeFranco, we were we met at E3, and he took a picture and he posted it. He goes, "Here I am hanging out at E3 with Chasing Daniel." <laughs> That's clearly Bernie Furs from Rooster Teeth. <laughs> and the Chasing Daniel guy's like, "Ha ha ha!" Another hundred followers. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's like stumbled into like yeah. fucking gold. People just follow him by accident. I know it's ridiculous. Oh, it's ridiculous. So have you ever seen Chasing Daniel like randomly <laughs> in somebody's <laughs> tweets? So Instagram recently rolled out like Chasing Daniel. You're a dickhead, by the way. I fucking hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Instagram recently rolled out like their Vine competitor, oh. <laughs> which was now you can upload videos up to 15 seconds in length in Vine. Right. That's too long. None of my Twitter... Uh, <laughs> 15 seconds is too long. No, that's what I was going to say. It's like, did they miss the point of Vine? Yeah. No, you've just been, you've just been exposed like, to Vine. At that point... If they came out with 15 seconds first... At that point, why not just watch like a YouTube video? Like, what's, yeah. why, what's the point? Like, seven seconds is a good... Like, it's like 140 characters. Yeah, okay, six yeah. seconds, like 140 characters. Like that being said, short to the point. I think done. Vine is retarded. <laughs> Some, I it, hate it. Used properly, it's, it's funny. No. Like Will, Will Sasso, if you, you gotta you follow Will All Sasso. Right. Well, I think Vine. that's what we said last time. Was uh, is is it one of those movie. things, like there's that meme of <clears throat> stop trying to make something happen, it's not gonna happen? <laughs> yeah. is, is Vine that thing for you? Absolutely. So fetch. Wait, is that, is that like the ultimate version of that to you? I hate Vine. Yeah. Uh, the ultimate version. Maybe. That's, 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 that's definitely up there. Yeah. I've come to discover that I like being annoyed. Because Vine is irritating, and people, <laughs> irritating. Who are, people who are irritating on Twitter are so irritating <laughs> on Vine. Like, you want to smash your phone and buy another one just to get rid of the moment. But it, I get some sort of buzz from it. Well, like, seeing some people I follow, and they're like, uh, 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 and it's just like... <laughs> well, I, I just can't look away, and I'm, I'll just watch it over and, and over again. And then it loops on you, too. Yeah, yeah. It loops. Yeah. Oh man! God, what was wrong with what? What, the what world? Twitter app do you use on your phone? Do you use the actual official Twitter one? Yeah, yeah, because the one I use, nah. Vine isn't like isn't a part of it. You actually have to click on it and go to a website to watch the. Oh, Vine. I would never do that. Nah. Yeah, so it's great because I don't have to worry about going through and seeing dumb. Yeah, Vines but when you see the them in your timeline, they don't autoplay. It's only when you click on the tweet that they yeah, autoplay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. None but, of my Twitter clients that I use, I use TweetDeck on my desktop, and I use. Tweet bot on my phone. Mm. None of them have upgraded in time to like take advantage of Instagram's video. So like even when I hit the button, it just shows me like a frame from it. And I'm like, all right, that's shitty. <laughs> so it's great. I love the solution. Nice. Although yeah. I did love the uh, Will Sasso <coughs> ringtone that you have. The, oh, uh, David, David does ringtone now. <laughs> the Michael McDonald in the shower thing. In the oh god! Bath, yeah. You want to play it? No, we already played. We last played week. it. Yeah, oh, last you? time. God, I love that. Jack also like, apparently watches the podcast know, all the time too. Clearly. Weren't you on that one? Uh, last week's? No. Oh. By the way, official Garwood says that yes, you have played with him before. <laughs> hey, uh, Apparently he's British also. Yeah. There you go. I remember him. <laughs> he I knows just all wish, about I British wish I'd stuff. <laughs> learned from his Greek origins that Tron was from Greek or something. Okay. Yeah. Um, hey, uh, so I just got a little learned. Hey, uh, Katie, can you jump on the mic real quick? So I just learned like one of the uh, brand names that is synonymous with the thing in. Australia is with coolers. What's a cooler called in Australia? Uh, an esky. An esky. Yes. A what? And like I say an that Eskimo? all the time. Everyone's confused. They're like, a what? I'm like, an esky. The thing, the ice, the thing, the box that you <laughs> take places. Kangaroo. <laughs> <laughs> kangaroo sunsets. It's just like, you know, downtown Sydney. All right, so my girlfriend, Ashley, she used to live in Australia for a number of years, too. Mm -hmm. And she clued me into something, and I wanted Katie to, to run an experiment with me. She went, Ashley went camping one time with her friends. And they had these marshmallows 
to make s'mores with, but apparently she had never bought marshmallows in Australia before. And the marshmallows in Australia are not the same as the marshmallows that we have in America. Apparently. Apparently. They're, oh, first of all, they're flavored. Yes. There's no, like, just marshmallows. So, like, marshmallow strawberry kind of flavor. Strawberry? What flavor is a marshmallow? It's, I mean, it's strawberry flavored. You can get pink and white and blue and green, but they all kind of taste like kind of strawberry, yeah. So what's yeah. the white one, then? So marshmallows. Strawberry. They're all strawberry. Yeah. Oh, they're all white. No. <laughs> pink, white, blue, and green. Yeah. Did you, can you not hear her? Yeah. No, I really can't. white, blue, and green. They're all strawberry. <laughs> and so we got to talk with her. We go, well, how, are there any plain ones? And she said, well, what's plain? Yeah. And we said, well, it's just the white one. She goes, well, what does white taste like? We go, it tastes like white. Yeah, it tastes like marshmallow. So I have some, I have some American... You guys kept saying it tastes like marshmallow. Like, what does marshmallow here. taste like? Mayonnaise. Imagine a marshmallow Chris, without you wanna, the strawberry. You want to hand over these? So that's, that, now to answer your question, that's why this you is have why the marshmallows are here. So I'd like for Chris... Are you going to try to throw one in her mouth from here? Yeah, do it. And I'd like for Katie to try a marshmallow and tell us what, what? a marshmallow tastes like. We'll say chubby you, bunny. <laughs> She's oh, taking a bite. They're a lot softer. Than, uh, than our marshmallows, like they're not sticky. What are yours? You're like hard marshmallows? Yeah, no, they, like when you when you bite in them and pull them away, they kind of, they're a bit like stretchier. Maybe they've like, they're t they send them by boat and they've been on the boat so long <laughs> that they go bad. I also understand they just don't, they don't melt, like to make s'mores out of it, they just kind of like. When meh. you put them in the fire, they like bubble around the edges and then you eat the bubbles and then you put it back in and then you eat the bubbles and you put it back <laughs> the in. Bubbles? It's not like they're eating coal. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like it's just a different planet. But you roast it. This tastes like uh, what I imagine a cloud would taste like. A cloud? <laughs> no. Wow. Um, it's like, you know, icing sugar or caster sugar when you whip it all up. That's what that tastes like. I want to eat this so badly. I'm not going Why to. Why don't you eat it? So how many can you shove in? Track, bitch. How many can you shove in your face? How many can you? I've never done it. Let's find out. How many, fit? How many, how many marshmallows can Gavin Let's fit just go one for one. We'll go, we'll so go what do you think? Thumbs her. up, thumbs down on the American marshmallow. Um, it's pretty good. Yeah? I think it's good. They're a lot bigger. Our marshmallows aren't, aren't that big. Well, those are like the jumbo ones, too. Oh, hey, really? hey, hey, it's big boned. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's mom told it that. I have to the, try a small one. Oh, 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 wow, that was nice. a good throw. Um, okay, so Come let's on. see how many Gavin can how many, fit in How many marshmallows can you fit in Hey, mouth, Kara, yeah. you were saying there was a record for marshmallows. 16. 16, she said. 16. 16. How many yeah. do you think you can fit, Gav? Four, before I vom. I bet you can Just do five. four? Try five. I bet you can do eight. I hate them, though. Why do you hate them? Who hates marshmallows? I, I can't stand them. Oh, it's so good. The Ming. Also, American cheese in Australia is called tasty cheese. Mmm, tasty. That's what they call it. Is All that right. true or is he fucking with us? It's not the same. It's the same cheese. She just said it's not the same cheese. Get it back on there. Fight, we'll fight about this. <laughs> How many does Gavin have? Gavin's been doing two. it. That's two. That's <laughs> two. Don't go with me. Three. Gavin's got marshmallows in his mouth. We're going to do the marshmallow thing. Four. Four. You come on, come there. on. You can get eight in there. It's five. I told you you could do five. Oh, come oh, on. Come on, come on. Oh, get over here. I'll help you. Help him, Jack. Help him. <laughs> Your eyes are being red. I can't do something like that. Oh, get it out. Oh. I can't shove stuff in my face. I'll throw. I'll throw up. That's well, geez, said. that would be that would be horrible to see. Uh, all right, so what's It is the same cheese. cheese. For the record, the first internet video that I ever did, I fit 11 in my mouth. Not of that size. 11. They were like the smaller ones. Um, tasty cheese is like uh, it's <laughs> It's like real cheese, I guess. It's like what? <laughs> You're joking. Like real cheese. Uh, like it's it kind of, it's really oily and it's not so plasticky. Like you know how American cheese, you melt it and it turns into queso? You couldn't really do that with Australian mm. cheese. So it's it like kind Kraft of, singles. No, that's, even that's like a uh, plasticky cheese. I don't know, it's hard to explain. Your che American cheese is like plastic. Australian cheese is like oily, kind of creamy. So if you want plastic no, 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 cheese how or dare oil you? How cheese. Dare you? I don't, you know I'd like to be able to get I'd like to be able to get white American cheese. It doesn't seem like you can get that anywhere. Is that like mozzarella? That, basically? No. no. What the no, fuck's like, wrong with you? you? Guys don't understand your white basic American cheese. You can get white American cheese at Subway. <laughs> <laughs> that was close. You're like MPS Russia. Didn't even Dry. react to it. Marshmallow uh, going by your face. Uh, Subway. They have white American. They do. They do have white American cheese. That's can just... we stop throwing fucking marshmallows? <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was good. Oh, that was powerful. I like, yeah, that. I like the thump it. That was good. It. God damn it. All right, we're done. Oh, get rid of him. Get rid of him. Get, get him out of here. Give him to me. Oh, uh, guys, playing a parent. <laughs> yeah, taking the toy away. Guys took away our marshmallows and we can't throw them at this each other. wet. You can fucking throw it in the trash. What do you want it's me to do with it? wet. Um, so. <laughs> I ordered my PlayStation uh, 4. Well, I throw. Got, so I got, both, I got both consoles pre ordered now. Bragging about it. I am a that little bit. That was a real brag. Yeah. Actually, it's not me. It's good. You finally Jason finished Daniel. Last of Us, right? What? You finally finished Last of Us? I did. I finished it. I don't say finally. It's been like a half of a week. No, it's been like two it's weeks. It's been like two weeks. Well, it, it came, came out, came came out, out Friday of E3. 
Oh, did it really? Okay. So, well, yeah, I finally finished it then. Yeah. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. It took me a little bit of time. It took me a little bit of time to get into it. Um, but then once I did, I was locked in. Yeah. There's Great. a scene very early on, that cinematic scene with the booby trap. Yeah. You know, and that's about as, that's only like 10% of the game, so that's about as far as I go spoiler-wise. That is what locked me in. That's apparently, a really good sequence. the beginning of the game takes place just outside of Austin, right? Oh, yeah. Like, what happened to that video we shot? Some, someone figured out where it is. It's not out yet. Okay. We got a shot of video? Uh, yeah, Barb and uh, Gus and I went to go find the locations of the Last of Us opening. Oh, that's cool. Brandon yeah. says it's on his computer. Did you find him? Well, you'll have to watch the video and see. <laughs> yeah, we, we, uh, we drove over. Well, do you want to talk don't, about it at all? Don't spoil it. No, what, the oh, Last of Us or the, the video? The, the video. Do you wait, feel like, wait and see it. Do you right. feel like we talk about too many videos that we've made before we put them out? No, I don't care. You don't? Because I don't think everybody watches everything. Well, that's like the problem with the Cheap Hunter. Like, I'm always nervous talking about a Cheap Hunter stuff because we shot stuff today that won't be out for like four weeks. Yeah, okay. And it's like, I want to I want to talk about it because we had a lot of fun doing it, but it's like, yeah, I don't I know. Mean, we put a, there was a video that came out for RT Life where it was, it was Michael chugging that sauce. Oh, God, that was like a year but old. But I think the RTAA came out a year ago, but the video only just came out. Yeah. So we recorded an RT yeah. Life, like, back in December. Remember that? The car one? Yeah. Yeah. I think that... They're still trying to get that footage from me. I they can't get it off my I, iPhone. Huh? I, I switched iPhones, so it's like, I, I got to get my footage off from that. Okay. So we're having trouble getting that. Hmm. You can't just plug it in? Like, is it on this phone? No. Oh, it's on the old phone. Hence, we switch phones. I don't know what the fuck that means. Your shit doesn't carry over. No, it's switch phones. I got an older phone <laughs> after your phone, Your shit doesn't migrate? Because, like, it's Who's a modern me? piece of technology. All my old shit's on my new phone. Are you, uh, sorry, you got some kind my of video's fucked up phone. My video's not on my phone. My phone. <laughs> right, sorry that it's, like, the color. Oh, here it goes. Can I ask you a question? Here Why every time the iPhone comes up, do you, I, you and I get an argument? Why is that the case? Every fucking time, Pairs we get a fighting. shouting match Pairs over fucking iPhone. <laughs> the enemy's goddamn iPhone 4 today. It felt like I was holding a goddamn brick in my hand. I wanted to throw it as a zombie and beat it to death with a pipe. This is what I don't understand. In 2013, what? when you get, you see a status on Facebook or someone says you're a text, it's like, oh, I lost all my numbers. How does that happen? Yeah, yeah. How, do you, how do you, in this year, lose all your numbers? It used to happen to me in 1998. Yeah. I finally catered and installed Mountain Lion on my laptop and my desktop. And the only feature worth a damn in it is the fact that I can now answer iMessage text messages in iChat. Pretty yeah. awesome. So it's like I like I get a text message. I don't have to get my phone out of my pocket. It's just like right there on my screen. People are still right not used to that as well. Like sometimes someone will text me, and I'll just be like, and they'll be like, "Wow, you wrote that fast." I was like, "Yeah, you're texting my laptop right now." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, I, that's I don't want awesome. to trade business cards with anybody right now because most of the time people either have a smartphone of some kind. So they can have your business card. I go, "What's your number?" And they tell me their number. I tap it in, and then they have my full contact. Like I send them my full contact. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I don't know why more people don't send <coughs> contacts to each other. It's like the easiest thing. Well, like, there are some people. Who use who's Bump? Are there, there, there's an old old iPhone app called Bump. It's a great idea, but nobody yeah. has it. Yeah, it's it, basically what it is. It's you have this program called Bump, and you put what information you want to share on there, and then like so if I if Gavin has Bump, we literally take our phones like Bump Knuckles, and like somehow it'll register that the, like two these two iPhones went off the exact same time. Send it out to a server and be like, is this the person you're talking to? And you hit accept, and then boom, you've got their contact. This, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. What's it what? about? That? Because awesome. what, why doesn't it just say the names of people who are nearby and you just be like, that one? Yeah. Like, right. we're, we're in the room. I would see Gus iPhone, Bernie iPhone, Jack iPhone. I don't yeah, have to touch you. But I don't have to smash this. my phone into yours. I guess, yeah, you could just sit there like this, like, oh, yeah, I'm going to get all these contacts. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> give me those contacts. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Guys in the corner. I'm not, or, or, I know what I'm dreaming about. I guess if you've, got, damn. if you've upgraded your phone to a new one and you have a video on the old one, you're just like mashing yeah. together. Oh, get the, get the old video you're on like there. You're like pouring all the shit on there. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you get your iPhone, you're like, you're like making kissing noises. Like, Every blah, blah, blah. last drop. Do it. The, uh, you know, but I don't understand, like, I guess near field communication is going to help that. iPhone doesn't really have that yet. A lot of other phones do, uh, but iPhone doesn't have it yet. You could do it over Wi Fi, though. You can also do it over Bluetooth. Like oh, Wi-Fi. Yeah, I mean, Bluetooth is like, it's not used for much at all except for just connecting another device. But, but, then, but then again, you can send shit over Bluetooth. Yeah. But then again, you don't want to share all your, you don't want to share your information with everyone around you. No, like, I don't. We can approve that stuff. Yeah, well, but, uh, Brandon keeps telling my earpiece, I guess that's integrated in iOS 7. Oh, is it? Yeah, like that kind of contact sharing. Right, that was weird because that, that Apple, <coughs> whatever you want to call it, conference took place right at the same time as the Microsoft one just before E3. Yeah. That was weird timing for Apple to do yeah, that. Yeah, I have, and normally I watch all of those Apple conferences. I didn't watch and almost really didn't care about it. And they released yeah. the, uh, the trash. All the iOS 7 Mac stuff Pro. seemed boring. Uh, they released the Mac Pro. That was, the Mac Pro looks that weird, was dude. Mm. I want one. I want one. It's tiny and powerful. It looks I circular. Want two. 
Somebody did something to it that made it look really funny, and I can't remember the fuck it was. Does it make it like R2-D2 or nope. something? No. Someone took a big picture of a giant bin in a, in a public place that looked exactly like it. <laughs> yeah, someone put the Apple sticker right yeah, on it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. Uh, um, no, oh, somebody, you know what somebody did? Somebody put stickers on it and made it look like a bullet bill. And I thought that was oh, fucking that's brilliant. That's funny. Yeah. Now you gotta get one. It seems like a really cool idea, like so, uh, having a, um, a computer that you could finally conceivably keep on your desk again. Because those Mac Pros, there's no way you could put those on a desk and work. So those, those are machines that have to go under your desk. Yeah. They're so fucking big and heavy. Yeah, unless you I have another moved, Mac Pro under the desk to support the weight of the yeah. one on top. I just moved offices. That was the worst part of the move, was having to fucking lug my Mac yeah. Pro upstairs. Yeah. You, you, and, you, were the, you, were, you were the longest people to stay in one spot before you had to move in this office. Yeah, now I'm just getting shoved around. Now you're all over the place. place. You've moved yeah, like three times back in the past upstairs two months. Again. I've never been upstairs. Oh, ever? No. no. That's crazy. He was in his office, because it was, it was Jeff and I, you, and then Matt are the only ones who hadn't moved. And then <clears> you, were, you were the last, so now it's just Matt and then Jeff and I are the only two that haven't left our offices. I, uh, I wonder how I'm Joel ended up in my office. Uh, so you, you, yeah, yeah. Yeah. you should have seen how annoyed Jack was when he had to move his desk About one inches. foot to the right <laughs> or to the left to make room for the new stand for the mics. You were actually annoyed. You were like, well, my Jack sign's not completely centered <laughs> under my desk now. Did, have you seen the wires? Like, so I, that's why it's not centered. I wondered about it. Did I you really? I, was like, no, we I it. know Jack. I know that drives him crazy. Why the fuck isn't it centered? No, we, we had to shift it to fit, to fit the couch over there. Right. We moved stuff. That couch has moved around like three or four yeah. times. Well, if it was back wall, then I arrived, and then Ray Yeah, it was arrived. in front of the window for a while. Then and it was now the back wall. Ryan's and now, desk. Yeah. So we had to shift everything over when, to make it fit in there. When I was uh, cleaning out my desk to move upstairs, I found, like in the bottom desk drawer I had, I found a CVS bag filled with Twinkies. And like Hostess products. Okay. I guess like the day they discontinued them, I went to the CVS down here and bought a bunch. And I meant to do a bit on the podcast and I forgot about it. <laughs> Twinkies, sh- Twinkies do not last forever. They don't? Really? No. I thought that was Aww. the whole point of Zombie Life. They were like shriveled up and hard. <laughs> oh, man. They were, they were, they, 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 I didn't taste them, but they were, they felt disgusting. I, uh, I had a, uh, a sound booth in my office when we first moved in here. And I made, I stayed here one weekend. I painted it and I put up the foam in the sound booth and made it really nice and awesome. And Joel was in the other office that had a sound booth in it, and he, like, took the foam and, like, put thumbtacks in to hold it up, and it's, like, <coughs> didn't even cover the whole walls with it, just, like, piecemeal shit, and there was, like, a <laughs> mat on the floor, and it was awful. And so nobody would ever want to record in Joel's office, because it was the shitty sound booth, and I had the nice sound booth, so they'd always interrupt my work to come into the nice sound booth. Then we got all moved around, and over the course of, like, a year, Joel ended up in my office. Now somehow I'm in the office Joel used to be in, and people now come in my office to <laughs> yeah. record. I've so only ever Joel. recorded in that one. In, in, the, in the one on, on this yeah. side, right? Yeah, and it's the shit. It's by far the shittier <laughs> one. And it's just like, it's just because Joel is just like, eh. It has a better mic. Door. Here's where you yeah. made your but you mistake. But you got to move that mic. You, you have a better mic in where you are now. Yeah. If you were to move that mic over to Joel's office, everyone would follow but the mic. Joel, that sound closet is now filled with hard drives and shit. It's all like... They dampen sound. Li- listen, <laughs> there, there's a drives. reason why it was moved. I don't know what it was. Joel probably did it at midnight one night, moved the mic out so that now it couldn't be used in his sound booth. Because no, nobody goes in there to interrupt Joel. You should never have something that only you have that a lot of people need. You should be as far away I from I didn't. There's a fucking people. another one right across the hallway, but nobody ever uses it. And when it was the other situation, they never used the other one. People just want to be by you. No, yeah, right. I'm sure. They want to hang out with me and fucking Alan in our office. <laughs> what, what, Dude, Alan's what? the shit. Don't talk shit about Alan. What's that? Alan's the me shit. I Alan. love Alan. Yeah, what are we doing in our office? We're fucking talking on business phone calls. Who wants to be part Alan, of that? Alan's my gambling buddy. They're like, cheers, yeah. Like, <laughs> sales, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> business development. <laughs> so great. Oh, man. Oh, uh, here, let me read this. Read it. Uh, I want to remind everyone that this podcast is brought to you by Hulu Plus. You've tried streaming hit shows on your PC on Hulu.com. Now it's time to start your free trial of exclusive content in your living room and on your mobile devices on Hulu Plus. With Hulu Plus, you get total control to watch thousands of shows wherever you want, whenever you want. You can use Hulu Plus on connected TVs, game consoles, Blu-ray players, Roku, Apple TV, PC, or watch from anywhere on your smartphone or tablet on demand at all times. And with Hulu Plus, you can binge on full seasons, watch your favorite current shows, and even full series runs of classic TV shows. They've got Community, Modern Family, South Park, SNL, Monday Night Raw, The Man Show, Jimmy Kimmel, Family Guy, Red vs. Blue, and more. Hey, Red vs. Blue. Hulu Plus is only $7.99 per month, but right now they're offering an extended free trial of Hulu Plus that's only available to podcast listeners. Take control of your TV watching experience. Go to HuluPlus.com slash Rooster Teeth uh, for your extended free trial. So be sure to check it out. If you don't use Hulu already, it's an awesome way to uh, watch content. I might need to pick up Hulu Plus, man. 
I got have I it? I have an Apple TV at home. You don't pick it up, though. Well, I mean, I like pay for it. Buy yeah. it you use promo code Rooster Teeth for two free weeks. There we go. So, uh, no, because I've got the Apple TV, and Apple TV, they actually, they're, they're adding in stuff. So, like, they just added an HBO Go and ESPN. To, like, oh, is that what the update's for? Yeah. I didn't do it yet. Yeah, I love my Apple TV it's for awesome. that reason. And also, yeah. like, now, God, now that I finally upgraded to Mountain Lion, you can do air, desktop airplay mirroring. Yeah. 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 And, and they just recently added it where if you purchase, like, they, they do that, not iTunes Match, but where if you buy music through iTunes, <coughs> it'll show up on your Apple TV without having to run it through a computer. Mm -hmm. Whereas before, you actually had to have it like connected to a computer to stream What, yeah. what do you use AirPlay mirroring for? To make Nothing porn, yet, but to I make like porn really big, right? Well, you can already do that from your phone. A what? Yeah. We should, get, we should get an Apple TV in here to run this. Because like, we're always talking about going to websites. Well, we're or, looking or going at, to like we're going to probably upgrade our video switcher. Mm -hmm. uh, and the new switcher has the ability for two different devices to AirPlay stuff to them. Oh, cool. So if I pull like, something up on the iPad or your phone, you could hit the AirPlay and send it directly to the switcher, which would get ingested into the stream oh, that's automatically. Cool. All right, that's nice. So yeah, we're cross fingers. Hopefully yeah. I can get budget approval for that. Future. So it's I, expensive. I have this thing now permanently because I sleep a little bit later on a Sunday morning where I can't sleep on Sunday nights before this... Monday podcast thing. I and just want to point out, I want to go back and something for a second. All right. I just said, like, people want to come to my office and hang out with me and Alan. And both Gavin and Jack go, oh, don't say bad things about Alan. Dude, Alan. Like, fuck you, Bernie. <laughs> <laughs> nobody wants to no, hang out with you. But, nobody but was, Alan, for Christ's sake. Well, I just nobody said was, they want to see you, and you said no. Nobody was yeah. talking smack about you. You were just like, an Alan, why? Yeah, yeah, you were, you were talking shit about Alan. I talking shit about Alan. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck <laughs> everybody. <laughs> dickheads. <laughs> Anyway, tell, what are you going to tell your stupid fuck story? No, he gives a shit about. about that. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't sleep on Sundays. That was the most wow, that was ridiculous Ooh. response ever. <laughs> You're a fucking a bunch of assholes. So how was that insult to you? What's that? Because I said, oh yeah, like people want to come and hang out with me and Alan. They go, oh, don't say anything bad about Alan. But Bernie, yeah, you're a fucking piece of shit. Nobody wants to hang out with you. You're right. There. Hey, can somebody give me a drink? <laughs> What do you want? Do you want a... I think a Topo Chico. Oh. Topo Chico. All right, sorry. Things? I didn't interrupt you. You were saying you can't story. sleep? Oh, yeah. So I was thinking about stuff. And uh, the ultimate question that I came up with last night, which I was thinking about The ages. ultimate question. Hold on. The ultimate question. Bum, bum, the bum. ultimate question. It is? So I'm going to do this before they do the smash close-up on my face. All right. If you had a big, uh, <laughs> big w aquarium... Don't you get Google open to check no, this? No, no. If you had a massive aquarium and... <laughs> you drop, <laughs> and you uh, you just put it in space, right? Okay. And then you took all the, you took away the aquarium. There's just a glob of water in space. Yeah. Okay. There's a fish in it. Does the fish know that it's in space? Does it no. feel different for the fish? Does the fish understand space? No, but does the can the fish tell that there's no gravity anymore? I'm sure it can. I was wondering, how does the fish? Because does the fish know it's in an aquarium first of all? <laughs> That's not the question. <laughs> <laughs> because fish have uh, like swim bladders about the to regulate them because of gravity, right? Swim liners. Swim bladders. Bladders, yeah. Oh, bladders. <laughs> like that way they, they maintain their posture, like the right, they, may, they stay right side up. That's why fish don't swim sideways or upside down. They do when they're a bit sick though. Right, but if they're in space, there's no gravity, so I think they can't right themselves. Yeah, but, uh, you I ever mean, seen the video of the cat in the zero-g plane? Yeah, yeah I'm trying to so does, spin around. Does air not float in water in space? Does air, air not, not float <laughs> in water in space? You just, don't, don't do that. Oh. <laughs> we got it. We're good. What's wrong? We're fine. I got, I got my drink. Hey. That's gonna, that's gonna explode. Nah, it's good. Nah, we're good. Chug it. <laughs> wow. Uh, does air not float in water in space? So you have a, a, a big sphere of water. Right. Blow a bubble in it. Does it go to the top? It probably just maintains in it. Like yeah. Just, just in floats. the middle. Yeah. Yeah, what would happen? Like, if you put, if you had a fish and a glob of water in space, would the fish eventually swim and just go out to the edge? And, like, <laughs> just just like, like, oh, he comes out of the water, it's like, oh, <laughs> shit. Oh, well, I assume if you, okay, this is also assuming that you don't release the water and it doesn't boil instantly and disappear. Yeah, that would happen. Space is, like, very hot and very cold. Okay, well, it would either, like, no freeze. There's no pressure. Let's say we're on the International right. Space Station. Yeah. Yeah. Say, yeah, say we're, we're on the Space Station. And then you do it there. Okay. So it's not going to It's not gonna it, vaporize. It just might destroy the space station. Yeah. It's okay. in a waterproof room. Okay, yeah. Let's say in we're the space a, station. Let's say we're floating they fly in the Soyuz capsule up. They build a new addition to the space station. Waterproof room. Yeah. They bring up astronaut fish. I it, wonder, what, would it notice once it swam out of the water, whether it's out of the water? If it, it swam out of the water? Yeah, if it swam out the side of yeah, the water. Because its fin yeah, doesn't it's work, like, right? It can't propel itself anymore. Yeah, well, I don't know. The fish would die. I mean, that the fish is... Oh, I mean, it would be in oxygen as opposed to in water. Oh, you mean in the, you know, you mean it swim, 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 flap, 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 flap. Yeah, yeah, and he's like, oh, shit, like he goes out to the outer edge of the bubble of water. He doesn't yeah. recognize that it ends, and he just goes through it, and he's like, oh, shit. And like, you know, he's in a sphere, 
Welcome to last night in my brain, but I was. <laughs> this is why you this. couldn't go to sleep. This is, I'm just lying I, there. I totally had a Gavin moment in my head. I was Fit. thinking, what? How awesome would it be to have like a ball pit in space? Yeah, like that would be fucking cool. <laughs> and you'd walk up to it, and everything would just be kind of. That's not a Gavin thought. That's like a seven-year-old thought. Yeah, it's well, Gavin. which is Gavin. So, but how awesome would that be to have a ball pit in space? It should be cool to be in space. I mean, you add anything cool to it. It'd also be cool to have a thermos in space. <laughs> in fucking space, dude. I mean, everything would you be know great. It would be cool to have Alan in space. Oh, <laughs> Man, Alan in space would be has, awesome. Has NASA ever acknowledged to conducting sex experiments in space? Yes. Oh, what? they have? Yeah, on um, the ISS. So uh, there's a zero Wait, wait. He- heavy, uh, heavy insinuation of it. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I thought there was a whole thing like, like no one's ever officially had sex in space. I'll look it up. There was so a- do you think there's like some kind of sense of obligation? Like the astronauts are like, so uh, are we going to do this? <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. Or do you want to? No, absolutely. Uh, it totally makes sense. Hold on one second. Hmm. Uh, sex in space. I mean, why, why else I'm not talking make- about jerking off, Brandon. I'm talking about putting it in. Because straight to semen. Okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's, oh, is it not equally as awesome? <laughs> For real? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, I assume every every astronaut has jacked off in space. I guarantee you. Really? No. Why not? Come on. It's your one chance in your life to jack off in space. But you're you, monitored you, you constantly. Sleep. Where would you do it? In space. You brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> but would you do it? How do they poo in space? They have toilets. Well, of course they have toilets. They have like vacuum toilets. So it sucks it out of your ass. Basically. Well, it's like, well, kind of. it's like, it's like, it's sucking. In that general area, it's not like they insert a tube or anything. <laughs> It'll be so the like worst. something comes out and gets sucked up. We should right away. get uh, that Commander Hatfield guy to be on the podcast sometime and answer all these questions. I wish we, we I wish we could have done that Ed, while he was Ed, still Ed in space. Ed knows the guy, right? Like Ed knows the guy. I'm so sad that he came back down. Really? I he really was up there enjoyed. Tired. I he was up there for like tweets. eight months, right? Yeah, I think well six months, I think. Man. Yeah, you see when they, they had the three of them after they came down and they're all sitting in those chairs with their yeah. like, they have like some kind of like little like reflective cape on for heat, I guess. And uh, they're just all sitting there. They look miserable. I can't imagine returning to Earth from space of being in zero G for that yeah. long in orbit and then coming back to Earth. It would just be, it'd be like being a newborn again. You'd be like, everything's yeah. heavy and shitty and you'd be Gravity. sore constantly. Every like, step would be like, oh. Don't they have like two God. weeks in quarantine where they can't really do anything? One case they get like space flu? Well, no, it's like, you know, to kind of readjust. Like to kind I don't of... think they do that anymore, do they? I thought they, I thought they had something. I, thought, I remember him tweeting they, they about They quarantined something. the guys, I think, when they got back from the moon. But I know I... that they test them a lot. They do blood tests and exercise yeah. tests on them and stuff. And bone density tests, because you, your bones go all weird if you don't exercise in space. Right. Did, did you see the video that he did with uh, Ed and Bare Naked Ladies? Mm-hmm. That was pretty badass. He did a bunch of cool stuff. Yeah, he we did should one, find I, out the name of the guy we're talking yeah, about. He did Space Oddity. He's cool. Chris Hadfield. Chris, Chris Hadfield. Hadfield. Yeah, Space Oddity from the space he station. He did a cool video about what's it like to cry in space. And the tears don't come down your face. They just pool over your eyes. And he poured water in his eye to demonstrate this. He was like, and the water would just be like, over his eyes. And he would move his head and the water would like slush around on his eyeballs. Yep. He did it with a washcloth. He wrung out a washcloth. Yeah, we talked about that last week. Yeah, did you really? God, we yeah, we no, totally no, no, that did. was for a couple weeks ago. That was when I was on. We talked about two weeks. Two ago. weeks ago. You guys are looking crazy. Up you right. missed two weeks of podcast. Uh, no, I've been gone about four weeks, three or four weeks. I've been what? gone since before E3. Where have you been? Uh, I was at E3, uh, and then after E3, uh, who were you at E3 with? Alan. <laughs> he was there. <laughs> yeah, Alan it was, was great. There. What was Alan? I was with doing? Alan the entire time. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Alan's such stories. a cool dude, man. So, uh, um, I wish Alan was here right now. Yeah, because it was <laughs> me. It was me, Ray, Jack, and Alan went out there. I still don't understand how we were the dickheads in that conversation. <laughs> I, mean, I just don't understand that at all. <laughs> Fuck you guys. Could you, never mind. I'm not gonna play you. The uh, and then uh, where was I after that? I was somewhere. But you I went here. to that somewhere. thing in Dallas last week. Uh, oh, I went to Ed's concert. Yeah, we were oh, just yeah. talking about Ed. Yeah, I went to Bare Naked Ladies. Nice. Concert uh, to see him. And then yeah, I had a stream event uh, where I went out and we talked about the future of television. Oh, that. is that what you were doing? No. <laughs> you should have been here. You were literally, you left the future of television <laughs> to go give me. a talk about I the know. future of television. We, can I tell you something? This might be, uh, you know, give an indication of where we are. Maybe I'm getting jaded or something. We got invited to go during E3. I left because I went to a... Uh, oh, this, lunch. Okay, so the, the way he phrases it, so we had plans. We had set this thing up. <coughs> He's like, we have this thing we have to shoot at, like, at noon. And so it's like, okay, so Ray and I are walking around. It's like, okay, noon's coming up. <laughs> we sh- we uh, you know, we got to get there. And then Bernie texts me. He's like, sorry, can't do lunch. Or sorry, got to push. Forgot I had I had lunch set up with Don Matrick and Steven Spielberg. Oh. Which is like, uh-huh. <laughs> like, how do you forget that? I didn't mention George Lucas. Oh, yeah, yeah. Real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know, George you don't want to mention it. You're like, yeah, and... Uh, George yeah, Lucas. but it's like, how do you, well, it's been a while since he made like, a good he's movie. Like, <laughs> like, oh shit, forgot. It's like, how do you forget lunch with Steven Spielberg and 
<laughs> no, it, it was a, it was a thing. It was like it was all about the future of television. It was this luncheon where it came out, and there was this discussion, and afterwards, it actually got a lot of press about Spielberg and Lucas saying that the studio system's dead. Studio system's dead. That that was that thing, and uh, and, and Don Metric, who runs Xbox. Um, was a part of it. So, so why was Don Matrick involved? Is it because of the heavy Xbox I'm television totally integration? Totally sure it was because of the Xbox being so entertainment heavy. Hmm. Did you ever see the uh, Xbox hardware announcement in one minute? Yeah. That, yeah. that was, that was the pretty TV, telling. TV, 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 TV. That video is fucking great. That's, That's a, a good video. That guy, that guy did one for the PlayStation like, press conference a couple years ago. That was really funny. Is he the guy, the Ridge Racer? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ridge Racer. But anyway, continue. No, so that was I've been saying like, like we were there for like a little bit of time and we were just like I was like Dash, you want to go? She goes, yeah, let's go. So we, we just like left. You know what I mean? That's pretty jaded at this point to be like, yeah, it's just because it was like listening for as much respect as I have for those guys and how much they shaped my childhood. Listening to them talk about the future of television just felt to me like okay, I do this kind of every day. You know what I mean? It's like. Wow, you mean people are going to be able to make their own TV? Yeah. Wow, this is crazy. It's, all, it's like it's all big news to them. Yeah. It, it really, it's like yeah, it's, and it, it, the worst part is to say it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. It's like oh, we know dozens of people who are doing this stuff every yeah. fucking day. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is already dead. It is already dead. Yeah. It's, it's like dead, and it doesn't know it. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, it's we're a, like the paramedic who was like, watch the guy fall <laughs> off the the yeah the television. Like, oh, they're the like, guy still waiting for the body to hit. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Basically. Yeah, it's frustrating hearing people talk about the internet and like, oh, you know, content on the internet. It's, well, like, it's like when you talked about E3, where they said <clears throat> internet doesn't count. Yeah. Oh God, dude, that's oh, that pissed me off. What are you talking about? Yeah, so you, I think you were there. Or when we were, we were editing, we were getting Katie a badge, and we were like, went up there, and we, you know, all I needed was one more badge, you know, because she was going to be helping out with camera stuff. And uh, we get there, and I'm like, okay, well, you know, we have 5 million subscribers on YouTube, because we had to prove, you know, that we were a legit source or whatever. And so we get up there, and I show this woman, and she's like, oh, well, I've talked to my manager. The manager comes up, and like, here's our channel on, on you know, YouTube. Like, we're, the, we're a top 20, you know, top 20 streamer on YouTube, or a top 20 partner on YouTube. Five million subscribers. She literally said, oh, well, internet doesn't count. Like, internet, well, wow. internet well, doesn't count. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? I was, I was looking okay, probably something like this, you know? But it was like, you know, it's like, the internet doesn't count. That's what 90% of the people there are, are broadcasting to or talking Shit. on. And it's just like... Well, the problem is, too, is that I guess they, they're used to dealing with people all day who are like, they have a blog and they have to have some kind of filter so that yeah. they draw the but, line I mean, there. It's just like, I don't know. At what point, how many million does it take for somebody to go, oh, okay, that's serious. Yeah. You know? well, I can that, take, that was upsetting. I can take my film buddies like that are, uh, you know, they work in, in, in L.A. and I see them when I'm out there. It's like... What are you doing this week? It's like, oh, they, uh, this uh, gaming studio sent us over a bunch of these games that's coming out next week. It's this X game. I go, the fuck, you have that? And they're like, yeah, they go, I'd like to play. They go, I go, I'd like to see it, you know? So I go to the house, like, I, this wasn't the case with Last of Us, but it would be the example of like, Last of Us. They would all have it a week early. But they work in film. It's like the, the gaming studio goes out of their way to ship all these copies of this game to, like, I guess other artists as, like, a show of, like, camaraderie or yeah. something. But it's like, they're not going to cover, they're not going to make a movie saying we played this game or something like that. But they have like two dozen copies. And meanwhile, Gus, you have one copy of a game and we're all like waiting for you to fucking yeah. finish it yeah. so we can get it. You know? I mean, that's the weird thing about Achievement Hunter and Rooster Teeth in general is like, we've talked <laughs> about this before where we, we don't do proper reviews and we're never going to do proper reviews, you know? Yep. And so the fact that I we're... I would say we're never going to do them. Well, I We've mean, talked about it before. We could buy, but, who knows? Maybe we'll expand it in the patch. Yeah, but, but our philosophy is we talk about the stuff we like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But even then, it's like, we're not an editorial site. Like, we play the stuff that we enjoy and then we talk about the stuff we enjoy, but we're not going to be like, oh, well, the sound wasn't good and the graphics weren't as good. You know, like, we don't do that stuff. We don't and, do scores. Yeah. yeah. And it's just right, like, that's a good way to put it. On yeah. a scale of 1 to 10, no. That, no, no. And well, it's like, made up scale. Or this game is better than this game. Even much, though they're not related. Like we're not going to end up on Metacritic, you know? And like it's because of that, yeah. it seems like it hurts us almost in some situations. It is a weird <laughs> thing that because we are not critical of the games, it's, it's weird they, that we don't get as much like respect coming back the other way from the gaming industry for that kind of stuff, yeah. like exposure. In the, well, we put out like the patch as our podcast, shot to number one again in that category. Again, we're at the yeah. top of the gaming categories in iTunes. But it's like, but because we don't say, hey, your game's shitty after they give it to us. They, it's weird. It's right. Yeah. It's really weird. To because because if you don't call something shitty, you can't be validated when you say something's good. Is that what yeah. it is? You I think? guess. Like there's okay. no balance. Like you like, need a bar. You, you, they don't have that. Well, we're better than whatever that they said was shitty. I still feel like we mention pros and cons about every game we talk about. Yeah, but I feel like we're fair about it. Yeah. I mean, well, even I said we were playing Flock, which, by the way, somebody discovered the Flock game that I played with you and Jeff and Joel way back. That's online. Somebody posted it. Where was that posted? Apparently, it was like. 
Uh, my favorite thing was always people just like playing the games and talking, like in, even back in the achievement guide days. Like we did the Left 4 Dead one, and then we did. I think we did the following week after Left 4 Dead. We did, we said, oh, let's do another one of these. We didn't know what to call them. We just called them the podcast guys play guides, flop. Yeah. yeah, and um, we did it. But then we all watched and we're like, yeah, I don't know if this is all that interesting. So I put out like three minutes of it for sponsors saying, yeah, we made this video, but uh, we didn't like it. Video. And in fact, people. In fact, people were. Um, Talking to us on Twitter just now, saying whenever you guys talk about a video like you shoot something for Achievement Hunter, just let us know when it's going to come out. We don't know. A lot of times yeah. nowadays we shoot things and we don't know when they're going to come out. Yeah. So the the last thing we want to do is set the expectation that a video is coming out at a certain time and then it yeah. doesn't come out. Yeah, that Bernie, with- Bernie might upgrade an iPhone. <laughs> Who knows? That happened with us with I think Monopoly or something. Like we mentioned that on Awu, and then we made something that week that we thought was amazing. <laughs> Put that out instead, and then all of a sudden people are like, "Where's Monopoly? Where's Monopoly? Where's Monopoly?" I was like, "God damn it! All right." And no, so- it's yeah. So that's that's we we try not to do um, too much scheduling um, communication, except for on these days we do these shows. Yeah, you know that kind of thing. There's a downside for me of doing so many videos in advance when we do a really good one. Like for example, we finished playing. GTA 4, Cops and Crooks or something. Yeah, yeah. And we'll, we'll stop recording and I'll be like, I can't wait to see that. Damn it. It's going to be like three yeah, weeks until I can about watch it. it. Yeah. So I can but see then you forget about it and like we've got people now who are literally just editing our stuff. Yeah. And it's nice to be like, and then like they'll turn in a video and be like, oh shit, I forgot about this. And then you, you just see it for the first time again, you know? Yep. It's kind of cool. Like, God, the Cops and Crooks part one the dump trucks coming off the... Anyway, yeah. you should watch Cops and Crooks Part 1 if you haven't yet. I love seeing those videos. Every time you, I know you all have a final, oh I always come God, into your office to part, watch it. Part 2 just came out You today. guys just yeah. put out Part 2, yeah. yeah. I, I, think cr- I crashed a helicopter into the water. <laughs> and I pulled it, it and I pulled it back out. I, you know oh, in GTA where you, you're yeah. at that moment where you clip in the water and it's like, oh, I'm, I'm in. Yep. I kind of clipped the, the uh, propellers and they slowed down to the point where it was about to sink in. But then I bounced the tail out and it kind of... Got the speed up again. And I took off. It was probably was the closest I've ever seen almost a completely chopper in GTA go into the water and then come back out. I've never seen anything like it. was like incredible. It. And so, and you were recording at the time. Yeah, it was in the video. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Well, G- GTA is one of the most frustrating games to play because you have amazing stuff that happens all the time, and then you can't go back and get it. So, so when well, you talked about how in the PC this version, is your, they have uh, that. yeah, this is Bikes the one from last week. I actually yeah, yeah. Lone, lone Wolf Biker. Lone Wolf yeah, Biker. Lone Wolf Biker. Yeah. I bought the PC version after I bought the Xbox version just for replays. I didn't play the actual campaign. I just drove around it's funny, I and don't, recammed stuff. When GTA 4 came out, it didn't grab me. I didn't want to play it. But when I watch the videos y'all put out, it's like, I really want to pick that back up and play it. Yeah. Dude, like, I really want to get into it before GTA like, 5. We've been doing the thing now where we'll load the game and like when we're waiting to get into multiplayer, for some reason my save didn't work. And so it keeps kicking off the beginning of the campaign over and over again. So I like watch that cut scene where the guy getting spanked and yeah. stuff like over and over and over again. And I finally I'm like, I need to start playing this game again. I need to, I need to <laughs> replay that the whole thing. damn thing. That, that is Just one thing I do dislike about games is when there's a gimmick to get to a different part of the game. Like, I don't want to have to go into the single player game and pull out my phone to get to multiplayer. I want GTA it just to be 4 right is there. really a rare case for that though where you go to your apartment, you load up the campaign to then load multiplayer. Very few games do that. But I don't know why the they game, did it that way. May, maybe that's the worst example, but a lot of games will be like calibrations or they'll, they'll have like an in-game term yeah. for options or yeah. something else. And it's like, is this the options? It, what am I doing here? Like you have to figure out in game speak what you're actually doing. Yeah. Dead Rising though, Dead Rising 3 has really cool integration with that. They were showing off at E3 where uh, the character has a phone, which then the interface for that matches exactly what's on Smart Glass or your phone while you're holding it. Oh, that's cool. So it matches up and he finds ringtones and you get them in the, on your phone. Like you find yeah. stuff in the game that then translates straight one-to-one one across. That's pretty cool. So you guess. find ringtones in the game that <laughs> automatically show up on your phone? Right, because it's the same interface. Like your phone in your hand is the phone in the game because it's smart glass. And that's how you use it. So you're like running an app that sort of like, you know, makes it look like it's that phone. That's pretty sp- Freaking awesome! You just yeah. blew my mind. I don't know if I can think anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. I, I'm loving that we're start, we're starting to see some really cool integration. It with seemed that like that was the big thing this E3 was every game had ta- some kind of tablet integration. Yeah, yeah, or some kind of like other screen. I wonder if they could do it with the camera in the game. How so? Well, uh, there's a lot of like GTA has missions where you have to pull up your dumb, you know, 2001 style phone and take a picture of something. If you could do it with your actual phone and have uh, like a different view on there. Oh, it's so almost like the, like the Wii U. Like, yeah, like while you're driving, you can just be like... Have uh, you ever played Zombie U? No. On the, on the Wii U? So you hold the Wii U gamepad like this, you're playing on the screen, and then you go into a scanning mode where you pick it up, 
and you scan with it, you look around the room, and it's the room in the game, but you turn around <laughs> your physical room and you look for stuff. So, I haven't played it. That game lost me pretty quickly, but yeah. I thought that was a really cool That sounds use like a little bit too much, but yeah, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, I don't want anything that's going to make me like... Get up. <laughs> like, like do this while I'm playing. Like, I want to keep looking. Uh, have you tried out the Oculus Rift yet? No. That's... Uh, I'm Ellis. not excited at all about the fucking Oculus Rift. Really? I don't care. Wouldn't Ooh. it make for cool it's like, machinima style camera It's the camera same work? shit that's failed multiple times. No one wants virtual reality. I've no heard wants, nothing but good things about it. Yeah. No one wants some shitty thing you put on your face and you, you sit there like that, you know, closed off from the rest of the world. I want I don't it. Know. No. I want it. I want it. Absolutely not. I'll take it. If you Same want to send me Glass. one, I'll take it. Please. <laughs> I'll even Glass. say shitty things about it. Like this thing. <laughs> yeah. eight, out, eight out of ten. There you go. <laughs> I'll, I'll talk shit about it yeah. for you on your behalf. I'm looking forward it. to like, next revision. I don't <laughs> think anybody wants an experience like that. Like when you think about all the tablet integration. It's integration on another screen where you can look at. It's not something you're putting on your face like this and blocking out your field of vision and making it an exclusive experience. Is it because yeah. you wear glasses? That's part of it, yeah. yes. Yeah. You have the Google Dumb, what I, it? Google Glass. Yeah. It's not Google Dumb, it's called what, Google what? Glass. Does it, it work? Be called yeah, it's Google pretty cool. Dumb. <laughs> no, it's what neat. do you do with Google Glass if it's pretty cool? Well, they're, they're, they're still you know, obviously developing stuff for it right for now. Yeah. How much oh, was you that? did? It was, yeah, it was, it was expensive. How but much you was that? You said it was that? pretty cool, Can you say? What? Do yeah, you exactly. do? Uh, well, I mean, right now you can do, you can basically do Google Hangouts with people. So awesome. Like, <laughs> you're asking what you can do. That's what you can do. Yeah, that's asshole. cool. You can read Twitter. They've got, they've got, a, they've got apps where you can like so read websites. So a phone in your eye. Yeah, you can, you can make calls from it. Like, fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> take video, take photos. Like, I mean, How often you can, do you, you wear stream. it? Uh, I've worn it three or four times. But you only worn it You've to wear it. it. You, you wouldn't wear it in everyday no, life, would you? No, I wouldn't. Because it's like a big Tron thing in the front of your eye. Yeah, I mean, well, it's basically like, it's a frame, like, I've taken my glasses off to wear it, because they don't, like, uh, they don't have a prescription one yet. And, um, and so, like, it's pretty, it's pretty cool, because, like, streaming stuff from your eyes is pretty neat. I'm going to take it, I'm going to take it to RTX, and then try to do some Google streaming does from, it, from my glasses. Does it look like it's right well, there? you can stream it, from it? Yeah. It's got a camera? <laughs> yeah, it's got a camera, a front-facing camera on Imagine, it. imagine so. accidentally leaving that on. Oh, my <laughs> Christ. You just see some... <laughs> but basically, imagine, like, imagine you're holding, like, like, a, like a magazine, like, right here. Like, it's just above your field of vision, like, right here, and that's what so, you're looking at. Imagine I'm retarding. <laughs> 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 can we have, at RTX, can we have jack stream? Just like three hours guys, a day. I'm reading my latest magazine. Okay, I'll do it. Well, I mean, as long as the batteries survive, sure, I'll do that. You're going to have to pee a lot like this. <laughs> <laughs> it's not something you forget you have on. It's like, oh, shit, that's right. Well, the internet's seen my penis. So, do you, Again. when you're not doing anything, is there nothing on it? Yeah, it's just dark. So there's a couple ways you can turn it on. Where, it's I mean, dark. Not, well, I mean, it's, nothing's on it, so you oh. see through it. It's so like, it doesn't make the room darker. No, no, it's like I mean, it's a, it's a, like a mirrored thing, so you see through it. But unless mirror it's, it, it, you see your own eye. No. All right. And, and the way, like, you can light it up by either touching the side of it and it turns on, or you can actually set it where it's got a like a um, like a, uh, a level on it. So if you look up, it'll like if you look up over thirty degrees, it'll turn on. So you so can kind of glance up. So you get a bunch of people on. walking down the street, good. Everyone, well, everyone is very fast. excited about Jack wearing Google Glass. Why have you not brought it into the office? All right. They are firmly in your camp. All right, cool. Firmly in I'm, your I'm camp. excited. It'll be fun. Including Adam, who, by the way, is probably sleep deprived. And no, he's probably actually, Adam, Adam was very excited. When, when he found out I made it in the Google <laughs> Explorers thing, like he, got, he was very jealous. Google of it. Explorers? That's, that's what, what it's called? called. Yeah, so that's what you sew <laughs> patches into a fucking sash? <laughs> Do you learn how to make a fucking virtual campfire it, for your goddamn <laughs> Google Hangout? <laughs> You're like, oh boy, I got my glass badge today. I, I didn't have to sew anything, it came with the patch. <laughs> so how much, can you say how much you paid? How much you pay? $1,500. $1,500 for I was a beta thinking, tester, basically. Sorry? To be a beta tester. I was thinking like 200 bucks, I was thinking 250 I was like, yeah, 200 like, bucks. I think might pay 200 to me, to me, this is bleeding edge stuff. If this becomes the next big thing, it's like, imagine getting an iPhone that's all like well two now. years like before anyone else gets one. It's pretty cool. That's, that's all well and good, but in four years, when they cost a hundred quid and nobody uses them, you'll be the guy who spent fifteen hundred bucks. On okay, it. I'm the guy who spent six hundred dollars on my first iPhone. You did? Yeah, I got I got iPhone day one. It was six hundred dollars, and then They're then, then, then like now, three months they? later, no, then three months later they like the they lowered the price. Gig one or whatever. Yeah, that was that was and a gig gen edge one. device. Technology's always expensive. I found a computer that I bought in like nineteen ninety five, and it was a piece of shit. Yeah. I posted a picture of it. I, I bet your phone was 10 times more powerful than that. Oh, easily, yeah. easily. It was like a P90, Pentium 90. 
And I think it paid like twenty five hundred bucks for it. Yeah, and that was that. old money. Yeah, I remember getting a sixteen yeah. gig. I got no, a sixteen right. gig hard drive for like four hundred dollars, and when, I was excited. When I was uh, much younger, my family got our first computer. It was a four eighty six SX twenty five megahertz, and then like two years later, after the DXs had come out, I uh, I upgraded. I bought the math coprocessor. Yeah. And put it in there. I was like, yeah, and I upgraded from four to eight megs of RAM. X-Wing ran like butter after that. <laughs> Dude, like, the Where's scent the, was so smooth. <coughs> Where, everyone kept talking about goddamn Battlefront with the Disney purchase of LucasArts. Yeah. Uh, and then LucasArts being shut down. Uh, what the hell happened to the X-Wing TIE Fighter franchise? That was probably one of the best flight simulators ever. That was a great one. And that going back to what we talked about, that's one of those games where when you launched it, it showed you like the symbols for a planet name and you had to look in the instruction book. Yep. I lost my instruction book. But you knew what Yavin was. I or... memorized every one of those fucking ruins. Yep. And when I would see it, I'd be like, oh, Yavin, Coruscant, or whatever. I knew them all. And I could, uh, I could still play that game. I can read Nordic break. runes because of Ultima. I can. I can just sit down and read them. To this day. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Do you not wish you could remove that from your brain to make Nah, because they're in The Hobbit and stuff, and I'm reading them, and I'm always looking for Easter eggs. Man, I wanted to... But uh, it's not. I wanted to North... <laughs> fucking gibberish. We were up in North Austin yesterday, <laughs> and I uh, drove past Richard Garriott's house. Like, you know, off 360, you can see his house up there, and it's like, how does, how does one person live in a house that size? Man, all those houses out in West Austin, it's like, where does all this... Where, what do all these people do? Well, I mean, he's got, that, he's got the house as like a castle, and he's got a, uh, like a giant telescope on it and stuff. Yeah, like, he's oh, got like a planetarium, yeah, not observed, a planetarium, yeah. like an observatory, yeah. Yeah, and it's just like, god damn. And you can see it like, takes a chunk out of the hill. Like, man, That's that cool. must be a rough life. He's going to be doing he's a doing talk a signing, at RTX. Right? And, and, a, and a talk. That's cool. Uh, I don't remember the schedule. I think it's on Saturday afternoon. That's awesome. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited. Like, I've seen him talk. I've actually never met him. He was even here. I didn't get a chance to meet him. But. Why didn't you go and meet him? It's funny, actually, uh, when we were working in the old office downtown, uh, Carrie and I worked on something, and Bernie uh, rewarded us for helping out with something by buying us premiere tickets to go see the new Predators movie, the, uh, the one that, that Robert Rodriguez produced, the yeah, one yeah. they shot here in Austin. And so Carrie and I went and saw this movie, and we sat down, and uh, I had a beer, and this guy sat down next to me, I looked over, and it was Richard Garriott. And like, the whole time, I was like, I want to say something, I want to <laughs> say something, but I didn't say anything to him. And then he, at one point I got up, I'm like, I'm going to get a beer. Carrie, you want a beer? And then he was too young. And I was like, do you want a beer? <laughs> and he just kind of looked at me. He's like, no, of course not. Who the fuck are you? And then I left and felt really embarrassed. I'm a fucking I, I astronaut. When they were filming Predators, uh, that's, when we, that's when we worked in downtown and that we had the hideout coffee shop next to us, mm-hmm. next door. Like three days in a row, I ran into Walton Goggins oh, yeah, out yeah. in front of the, the hideout because he was in that movie who yeah. played uh, Shane Vandrell in The Shield. Yeah. And I'm a big Shield fan. So every morning I was like, he's out there. <laughs> So how do you approach that? If you see someone famous that you're a fan of in public, do you approach them? I didn't say anything. And then yeah. afterwards, Bernie said, I probably should have said at least, hey, I just want to say I'm a big fan of your work, which I am. Yeah. I, should, I should have at least validated him. And yeah. been like, That's a, like I, I was on a flight with Ken Marino from the state. <clears throat> and like, it's the same sort of deal where I'm like, I'm, I'm, just a, I'm a fan, man. You know, I don't want a photo. I don't want an autograph. I just want to say I appreciate your work. Yeah, that's like I, the easy, that. I think that's the easiest kind of smoothest thing to do. I like, thanks. That's I did that. What, like, I've, rarely see, I've rarely seen famous people outside of actual productions I was working on and then never said anything on those because it's not really professional. But I once saw Rowan Atkinson in the supermarket that I worked in. Oh, wow. He asked me where Root Ginger was. I was like, it's over here. By the way, it's really nice to meet you. And he was like, oh, thanks. Didn't you make a journal on Rooster Teeth about that when that happened? Yeah, it's on there. I remember that. Yeah, it was like guy's a legend. eight years ago, maybe. <laughs> Pointed out Ginger to Mr. Bean. <laughs> so yeah. uh, apparently Richard Garriott's talk is at 4.30 on Saturday okay. cool. in, uh, in room 19, which is uh, one of our big panel rooms. I have to be careful talking about RTX because there's stuff I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about. I'm going to talk a little more about it uh, okay. after, after I read this here. Okay. So I want to remind everyone that this episode is brought to you by Onnit and their flagship product, Alpha Brain. It's an all-natural supplement. It's the first fully balanced nootropic. I don't know how to say that still to this day. Nootropic, nootropic, nootropic. Uh, designed to raise levels of all major neurotransmitters and clear out mental fog. What that means to you is in games, you get a faster mental speed, quicker reaction time, increased focus without the speedy effects of something like Adderall. <laughs> Uh, in life, you get increased motivation and mental drive, improvement in word recall and conversation flow, and boost to neuro and physical health. Uh, you know, on it or Alpha Brain's been a sponsor for a long time. I'm still a big fan of that product, and uh, I can't say enough about it. So if you visit onit.com/gaming, use promo code Rooster, you can get up to 10% off of your order. Um, I'm a big fan of the product myself, and I highly recommend it. We were talking earlier about stuff that people shouldn't do, and uh, people have been getting me free samples of stuff that I didn't subscribe for. Yeah. So today, I got 
Sure you didn't subscribe for that. Astroglide, <laughs> personal lubricant and vaginal moisturizer. So if anyone wants some of that, hmm. uh, I'm the guy there to go, go to today. All right. There you go. Pass I'll take that. We actually, a fan sent us in a box of uh, stuff today. We got a really cool thing where a fan and his, like it was, like it was a father and a son, they made the Achievement Hunter guys like pins and they were, they were specifically made for each of us. They made you, what? Pins. pins. Like, like writing. I they said pimps. Okay. He, he's <laughs> no. saying pins. Pins. But he means pens. Pens, okay. Pens. Okay, yeah, I was, I was so confused. You kept saying pins, but you were doing this. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway. Pen. Pens. So, like, like, but they're all, like, themed. So, like, mine was the Achievement Hunter colors, and I think Jeff's was, like, an or like an orange tree or something like that. Like, the, the color of it was orange. Yeah. And, then and the yours, mine was, uh, like, some sort of British wood that is found on the dashboard of Aston Martins. So yeah. I was like, oh, that that's is cool. Top. It's really neat. It's, like, stuff like that. It's like, wow, that's actually really cool. And then it was like, but the, the, the head of the pin is like a bullet. So it's like, it's pretty neat looking. So stuff like that's nice. RTX yeah, 2013. Uh, so we had a big, uh, RTX event.com. Well, we had a big press release a few days ago announcing a lot of our programming. Um, and I feel, I, I don't know, I feel like maybe we didn't promote it as much as we should have. Uh, just because we're so crazy, like busy doing a lot of other things. But, you know, among the, some of the announcements that were made is that, you know, Freddie Double is going to be there premiering a trailer for uh, Video Game High School Season 2. It's awesome. It'll be like the first time, you know, any of it's been shown. That's cool. Uh, anywhere. Uh, Microsoft 343 are coming back doing a big Halo 4 tournament. That's going to be a blast. Yeah. Are they bringing anything? Um, I can't say okay. any more besides that. Well, they, right. they said at E3 in the video that you and I were in, they said next stop is RTX. And we were looking at Halo uh, Spark <laughs> Assault. Yes. So I'm hoping they'll show up with that. I don't yeah. know. Gus they've, knows they've all got a, they've got a they've got a pretty big booth, and they're they're definitely running a a, a great tournament with a, lots of cool prizes. I will say Spartan Assault at uh, Spartan Spot <laughs> Spire, Spot Assault. Spartan Assault at E3 was a lot of fun to play. Like that was that was the first sort of like dual thumbstick game I played on an iPad. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, Jack, no wait, what'd you play I it on? I oh, excuse me, not an iPad. Not an <laughs> iPad. It was a Windows eight. It's a Windows eight tablet. Is what I played it on. Yeah, surface a Surface. Tablet. Yeah. They were giving one of those away. Like the highest score of the day got a got a, a surface, and I was like, "Man, those things are pretty cool." But, you know, and that's the thing. It's like you never know. Like the score we had to beat uh, on level one in order to win a surface tablet was two hundred and fifty thousand. I was like, "That sounds easy." <laughs> How the fuck do you know? Do you play the game? What scores mean? We got like 80,000. Yeah, like and, 80. And, and I have no idea how the fuck then, people got 200,000. Yeah, and then I think, I think Jessica was there, uh, uh, BS Angel. She was there, and she's like, like the highest any of the developers got was like 200,000. So like someone was just crushing developer <laughs> scores. So it's like, And it's not like, I don't know, I felt like I killed everything. <laughs> yeah. And maybe I didn't kill it in like the chain that kills and all that stuff. So the game's got a scoring complexity that's a little bit more in-depth. Yeah, also, it's fun, a lot of fun. you got to remember Go ahead. that you're not very good at Halo games. Do you remember when we played ODST? I am not I, very I've good at I've never seen you games. more annoyed than when you were playing ODST Firefight. You were just getting minged off. Why? You, you were probably 20 minutes from Rage Quit, I, I reckon, in that Let's Play we did. You think so? Yeah. I was like, you're not, you're not doing combos or whatever. And you're like, I'm killing everything. <laughs> getting, really, getting really stroppy with it because you had a really low score and you were dying a lot. That's fine. I remember we played Mass Effect too. I'm just like, fuck, just running around, yelling and screaming. I picked up that sniper rifle and embarrassed the shit out of myself. Oof. Although I did play with the sniper rifle the other day in something. Uh, there's a sniper rifle scene in Last of Us that's fucking a blast. That's a lot of fun. Gus, do you like your iPad Mini? I do. I'm, in fact, I'm monitoring Twitter on it right now. Dude, I, I have one of those, and I use it more than my laptop in my house now. Like, it's, I, it, like my laptop is... Like, I don't know if I could use it for that. I, I like my laptop. I like having more function. Uh, someone asked on Twitter if they can use their tablet instead of the printed Eventbrite. Uh, ticket? Yeah, you can bring a tablet or iPhone. Please, if you're coming to RTX, bring your ticket. Whether you bring it on your phone, your tablet, or print it out, it'll make check-in and getting <coughs> out of there a lot faster for you. If we don't have to look you up by name, if we can just <coughs> scan something, much easier. <coughs> nice. So, um, what's a good way, somebody asked on Twitter, and this is Banjo J. Banjo. Uh, what's, what's a good way to approach you guys? Since we were talking about us approaching people we recognize in public. What's a good way to approach you guys? Is it too much to ask for a picture if I randomly bump into you? I don't know what you use before. Yeah. Me no, per, me I personal. love it. Yeah, I, I don't mind. I, as, I, lo as long as I'm not in the bathroom or like sitting down and actively eating something. Yeah. I think, who put out the tweet that said, if you prank or RTX assault, assault, uh, yeah, no, assault a, a, a staff member, even in jest, you'll be escorted from the event. 
That was RTX RTX event. RTX event. event but, I know, but who put it out? I think it was Barbara, maybe. Yeah. Did something come up as a result? I don't or? know. It made me curious too. I wanted to send a follow-up tweet that was like, "If you bring a staff member ice cream, you will not be escorted out <laughs> from the event." Right. You'll be given a high five, and well, your ice cream I, will be. I appreciate that, though. That's, no, de- that's definitely a. Co- What's that? Oh, uh, Kara said Kara. ice cream will be knocked out of your hand. That, so I mean, that, you, that's Kara. something that, that that you definitely worry about is people who maybe feel a little too familiar. Are like, in on the joke? People who are yeah, in on the we, joke. We, we, that, yeah, that happens like, a lot. Punch to you us, or slap you. It's like. Gavin, yeah, I mean, don't have worried about that with Gavin for a while, where people are saying, I can't wait to go to RTX and slap Gavin. It's like, you're not going to slap yeah. Gavin at RTX. Yeah. I, some dude slapped me on the arm in Australia. And uh, it, it's almost like he felt embarrassed by it afterwards. He was like, oh, I really wanted to slap well, you. Did, and I was like, uh, Barbara well, said it's specific because people were, th- were, were getting together and we were going to throw wet bread at Gavin. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that would obviously, be, I, yeah. would, I would think, would obviously be crossing a line. Yeah, that's, that's way over the line. But yeah. even like, like, I remember when you guys were in Australia, somebody did Kung Shu and like kicked the shoe at you. That's true. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. That, for me, I'd be like, you as are long as gone. I don't get like, because I don't want to have to be serious with anyone. It's all, we're just like, we're just having a laugh, right? Yeah. That's all RTX is. We're having a good time. Yeah. And hanging out and taking pictures and stuff. But uh, I don't want to have to be like, don't throw your shoe at me. And get yeah. annoyed because then they're gonna have a pissy. Rem- they're gonna remember me like like I'm annoyed at them. Yeah, yeah. But at the same it's, time, it's like, a mood killer. Like yeah. I mean, who who in their uh, who who would think that's okay to do? That's what confuses me. Someone like, followed me in the bathroom last RTA. Yeah, yeah. yeah like that's weird. Like, if you, you think, think of Vegas where like Mike Tyson's coming along and a guy just walks up to him and slugs him, <laughs> it's because they want to punch Mike Tyson. Jesus Christ! Yeah, yeah. I would never do that. <laughs> it's like poking a bear. Like you just don't do that. <laughs> it's like punching a bear. <laughs> 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 it's a direct correlation. I would so just like say, beat the shit out of you. So that reminds me, I, I've told a few people outside of the podcast this, but now that I have cable, I, bought, I got cable for Game of Thrones, I told myself, but now I'm just like watching all the crappiest shows in the world. There's one show, I don't even know, I think it's on True TV or something. It's a TV show called Vegas Strip. And imagine if it's like cops, but they only follow police officers patrolling the strip in Las Vegas. Oh, God. Yikes. So it's just like constantly drunk people People pissing in public, people trying to buy drugs or Horse. soliciting. Yeah, uh, and it just it just that show has proven to me, as a tourist, you cannot get arrested in Las Vegas. <laughs> there was a guy, like obviously way too drunk, didn't know where he was staying, no shoes, covered in blood. Like what's going on? Like oh, I just beat some guy up. Like what? Oh, you know, I, yeah, he I, I punched him. He's like, okay, we're taking you back to your hotel room. <coughs> What? <laughs> they walked up on this one guy buying cocaine from a drug dealer. And they're like, where are you from? He's like, oh, I'm from Ohio or whatever. And they're like, all right, listen, you know, we really should take you to jail. We're not going to take you to jail if you just give us a statement on who you bought drugs from. He's like, that guy. All right, get out of here. Have a good night, sir. <laughs> wow. Like, you, you just let this guy go. I, I've never Christ. understood the no shoes thing. Like, so many people lose their shoes when they're drunk. Do you remember when in Australia and we saw Alfie Allen running down the street? He's running. Who plays uh, Theon Greyjoy in Game of Thrones? <laughs> we he was just with us because he was with us on the bus every morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We would talk to him sometimes. And he, should, he was just running by and he was like, All right, guys? And we were like, There's Theon Greyjoy hauling <laughs> ass with no shoes on. Well, it was between Game of Thrones season two and season three, and he wouldn't go into detail uh, for us. I guess he couldn't. But he was in the process of trying to lose, he said, 60 pounds, right? Oh, yeah. Or he killed us in he stone, was, yeah. and we were doing the calculations on it. I that that makes sense now, like, what he was doing. Yeah, because of the scenes he's gotten. Yeah, but you feel yeah. like he should have been able to tell you the books have been out. No, I guess it's true. But I guess that was not a big scene in the books, actually. Oh, okay. His stuff in uh, season three. Plus, he's, just being, he's probably being smart. You know what I mean? Yeah, the, those bus rides. Well, he said, you know, I was captured at the end of season uh, two. I like yeah, the spoiler. way he described his part, because he was, he was kind of very modest about what he did. He's like, oh, I was in Game of Thrones. I mean... Season one, I'm pretty much just like a really graphic sex scene, and then season two, I actually, you know, did more stuff. It's like, <laughs> it's like my character's really understood. It's like, yeah. my character's yeah, then a he fucking hacked dick. Him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah it's, uh, those, he, those bus rides in Australia were definitely like the weirdest, trippiest t- kind of things ever. They you were. Know, look around, it's like, they were trying to you from Never Ending Story. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of like, exhausting. Oh, is he on yours too? Yeah. He was on our tour as well. Yeah, apparently he comes around a lot of those. And then, uh, Tattoos and, and mohawk. And, and then, uh, Nathalia, what was her name from uh, from Game of Thrones? The uh, the the wildling Natalia. I like Natalia. Natalia. Cat. Natalia. Yeah. Or yeah. Nat. Sorry, Nat. Yeah, yeah, she was on there. She's, her name is Ooft. In the, what's the wildling? Asha. Asha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooft. <laughs> <laughs> I could never remember. Like, I could never remember her name. Hello, oofed. <laughs> oofed. But then you see, it, like, it's just like, man, so like, Ash is that far off. <laughs> but and then, like, but Dave- I felt like when we used to go down there, like, you know, we used to go down for events back in like, God, oh five, oh six, a lot. I felt like the the crew I constantly ran into was like the old Firefly crew. Yeah, like, it was Baldwin always was like there. Jewel State, 
uh, the the woman who's the consort, Morena, oh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Like I would always like we'd be we'd be staying at the hotel, be like, oh, hey, what's up, Jewel? <laughs> like we'd like pass each other in the hall and no, well, I really, be on the bus. Together. Funny, I have a photo with me and Adam Baldwin that Ray Park, who was Darth Maul, took <laughs> for me. I'm like, hey Ray, can you take a photo? Of this? <laughs> it's like the weirdest that's, thing. It's like, that's oh, like people talk about like what's like the coolest or the most unusual thing that's come about because of Rooster Teeth, and it's I think it's those trips. Yeah, absolutely. Because like you encounter other people that you're like huge fans of, well, and you're on the same level as them for some weird reason. Yeah, that, yeah. that's like me. Like, I, I was on a bus trip with, um, I ended up sitting next to, like, this old British guy. Started talking, it was Dave Gibbons, who was the, like, the, the, the artist for The Watchmen. Oh, that's and it's cool. like, holy shit. And so I'm talking to Dave Gibbons, and like we're talking back and forth. And I'm like, yeah, I do stuff on the internet. It's like we do these video game stuff. He's like, oh, that's cool. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, are you on this Twitter thing? It's like, it's crazy. I've got 20,000 Twitter followers. I don't know what to do. And I'm like, he's like, are you on it? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, how many followers do you have? I'm like, I have 85,000 followers on Twitter. And he's like, wait, what? And you know, it's like, they don't like, do you know it's like a whole, it's a whole, di- <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole different <laughs> world, you know? But like it's like it's kind of interesting to see that world kind of coming yeah. towards our world and like all kind of slowly blending together. I would always feel like I want to apologize to Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> I would always feel like such a douchebag though because I would have all these interesting moments that in my mind were really amazing to me, but I didn't want to tell anyone because of how douchey it sounded. Like usually when you're in a bar and you're like trying to bust past people to get, like you're at the back of the bar, I just got drinks and I was trying to rummage past people. But it'd be like an obstacle course of celebrities. It'd be like, yeah. oh, pardon me, Christopher Lloyd. Oh, Vern Troy, I don't want to knock you over with my knee. Oh, <laughs> it was fun. there's bloody Trisha Helfer. Trisha Helfer, like, yeah. Here you go. Fun. It's like, oh. yeah. it's mental. Well, that's like, I talked with uh, Tony Todd, who is the Candyman. Like, like he's a classic actor. And he's in uh, Modern Warfare 2. Like, he's one of the characters in Modern Warfare. That's how we started talking about video game stuff. Oh, yeah? He's like, he's like, you killed me, didn't you? I bet you fucking murdered my ass in the game. It was like the weirdest thing ever. It's like... So strange to be in those situations. But it's, it's weird too. It's like it's like I think though that entertainment in general has become so niche as well that people are like they can be really well known in in a certain group with a certain group of people, but then like outside that group, like they're not known at all. And we're yeah. a great example of that. I mean, like we we were at these same events, you know, as guests of this thing, and there'd be lines, and it was like the people in the room would be like some of the people would be like, "What do you tell yeah. me? What you do?" It's no. like, and it's like we'd explain it to them, like it makes no sense to me. Yeah, there, there was a woman there from Doctor Who that she had the like by far the longest <laughs> line. Well, it was like David Hasselhoff and then Sam Jones and then her, and it was like I had no idea who this woman was, and like it, it, she was like this huge thing, and I was like, I literally don't know who you are, and she was the, like the third biggest person there. Well, that's the I weirdest thing. I still see it's people like everywhere though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I see peop- accounts on Twitter with over 10 million followers, people I've never heard of. Yeah. And it, yeah. that's amazing to me. 10 well, million the, people know. It, it, you know what's really funny, though? It's a great analysis of celebrity is you look at the tabloid from another country, the cover of a tabloid, and you're like, who are these fucking people? I'm that way with American tabloids now, too. But like, I see a UK magazine and all the people on the cover of it, it's like, Katie Holy. Price. Who the fuck is Katie Price? Jordan. Page three model. Who is that? Like, I have no idea. Or it's like, she, I get that now, too, when I like, go to the supermarket and said, so. uh, it's like, uh, Billy Jean is in a fight with Bobby. Who's going to win out in the divorce? I'm like, who the fuck are these people? I have no idea who they are. It's, it's, it's all reality TV now, yeah, right? Yeah, but they're huge. Or it's I mean, so, huge. You're probably reading the plot of a soap opera. <laughs> no, well, this is like reality people. Uh, no, TV yeah, it's tons, of, tons yeah. of reality TV. I saw, speaking of reality TV, after I watched that Nick Valinda crossing the Grand Canyon, uh, <laughs> Discovery debuted a new show called... Naked and Afraid, where they take <laughs> two survivalists and drop them off in the Costa Rican jungle naked. Wow. With only like one, they can bring one thing. So last night, or they, no, one of them took a machete and the other one took like a fire starting kit. And they have to stay in the jungle for 21 days. Jesus. And so it's just that like watching stupid. people get like Best joke angrier ever, total and waste of time angrier. Would be to be the dude who brings a condom. Like, <laughs> regardless if you're male or female partner, just go. Like the most confident man on the planet. <laughs> yeah, though, remember when the Discovery Channel had Discovery shows that were like educational? Yeah, and remember when the Learning yeah. Channel was the Learning Channel? Oh, no, it's the, not the yeah, it's TLC, it's TLC now. now. Oh yeah, that's it's well, I always fucking brutal. For, I immediately figured it out. Uh, but yeah, it's just like it's it's crazy. Like in 21 days, the guy lost like 45 pounds. I think he ate twice. Jesus Whoa. Christ! So what it was he, he ate like, like a snake? And then he ate a turtle. And I think that's all he ate for 21 How far days. down the list of things to eat do you get, do you get the snake or turtle? That's yeah. all they caught. I know, but it's just like... Oh, I, yeah, yeah, but that I think, I think he didn't eat the snake till like day 10. Were they They're, together? Did, Gavin? Yeah. Oh, they were working there together. There's a big difference between eating turtle and eating a turtle. That's two different yeah, things entirely. It is entirely. literally swimming, catching a turtle, ripping its oh. shell open, and like putting it on a fire. Well, I'm hungry. The worst part is like, it's like... 
you probably would want to kill the turtle before you de Yeah, it. you just bite his head off. But then you can't. How do you how do you kill a turtle before the, you, you oh, tease they it They had the machete, but I guess you gotta wait for the head to come out. I want to thank you for saying machete, by the way. I know how hard it is. Just get, get something that looks machete. You want to say machete? <laughs> the, like when they, machete. when they kill the snake, the one was like, I got to eat the heart. It was so good. It's like, wow, she's happy she got the heart wow, of a Jesus snake. Christ. Did you ever see those, uh, those Bear Grylls clips where he's like, oh, snake, oh, and then he just closes the mouth, puts the entire head in his mouth and just goes and breaks the neck and then just puts it around his neck and just carries on walking. For no. Dude, Bear Grylls, <laughs> I, we were talking about it today at He lunch. must do stuff just for the sake of oh, doing yeah. it. Like, he doesn't have to break the, the snake's neck with his mouth. He could just be like, rock. Well, did you see the one where he gave himself like a seawater enema? Yeah, we were talking about <laughs> that. <laughs> no, he did, yeah, because he was pulling Why? up. Why? He, he needed water, but it was, it was in the ocean. You can't drink this, the seawater. But he found some rainwater that had pooled in a rock, but tons of birds had shat in the rock as well. So it was like all like goopy and stuff. He's like, if I was to drink this, I'd be insanely sick because of all the goop. But... My asshole, could, I'm paraphrasing, my asshole can take in the water without tasting all the goop. You can so drink water through your asshole? You can take on liquid with you your ass. It absorbs yourself. in. It's yeah. like, but you would still get infected. No, no. You're, but you're, you've already got shit in your asshole yeah, it's anyway. Like, it's it's Mine, a pretty tough place. My, yeah, I got... Ugh, and also, shit fights the bird shit. It's, <laughs> the same, it's the same way like alcohol <laughs> drifts into your blood really quickly through your ass. But so you How can do you know that. That's a thing. <laughs> because like, girl, girl, why so would you use an example? Such a bizarre no, example. No, I, I, I don't appreciate that. Like he's right. People stick vodka-soaked tampons up their ass yeah. to get drunk, or, or up their vaginas. Next up on slow mo, guys. <laughs> there, there, there was the dude. <laughs> Come on, you've never heard of this. Yeah, they no. dunk him in body, that's, come in, and go on a night I out. I'm going to the wrong get... party. <laughs> <laughs> I think. To go on a night out. Oh. What? Yeah. You guys are both accept this like fact. Like, it's so cheap because it gets you hammered. Like there was there was a guy who got his wife to pour a shot of vodka in his asshole, and uh, he died. Alcohol poisoning. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. it absorbs directly, yeah, and you can't tell. If you found someone in the world that you're married to, the love of your life, and she is comfortable enough with you to pour vodka up your butt, no, she, said, she just said to pour it on a tampon enough. and stick the tampon up your butt. You've Forget don't make it creepy. Just get, oh. a, just get a funnel, pour You've it right in. You've gone far enough. You, you should have everything you want in life at that point. So you, you don't, don't need the you shot of the butt. You don't think that would be awesome if someone asked you to do that for them? What's that? Would you not think that was awesome if someone said, here, do, do shots of me. Oh, by the way, we're doing them in assholes. Today. I would have a long talk with them first, would, would probably. You, would, and you could do the thing, you know when people cross their arms and do that? You'd be like, upright, oh, just be like, <laughs> three, two, one, go. <laughs> would you be willing to do that? Like, no, no, I don't want to put anything in my ass or near it. Uh, I don't want to sit on vodka. God, what do you, I mean, what, what do you come up with that idea? Like, I can't drink alcohol it's fast science. enough. I it's get science. that it's science. Clearly it's science. I get that it's science. Some people science. can't afford to have a, punch, a bunch of drinks on a night. But then they come up with that. It's like, I'm not going to go get a, more money. I'm going to find a way to get the alcohol into my body. I've got to say, the actual act of drinking, like chugging bevs and doing shots, isn't pleasant to me. If, if I could just pop something in and then could become... Could you... Yeah, sense- it's called heroin. But <laughs> so if I can just become drunk. Ultimately, you want alcohol to be absorbed into your bloodstream, yeah. and like sticking it up your asshole apparently is a better way to do that. Or in your eye. Could you just get an IV of yeah. vodka and just inject alcohol directly into your blood system? Yeah, and you'd, you'd probably die. You know, you guys just came back from uh, Vegas. Yes. So can I talk about it? you went to Vegas. Yeah, yeah sure. And uh, Katie didn't like it. Anyway, at first she 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 grew accustomed to it. I see. I know. I get it. There's a lot of people who don't like Vegas. It's nothing. <laughs> it's you're smarter than most people. Um, but they have a service where you, after you get a hangover, uh, you can get hydrated. Like they'll they'll come to you and they'll give you an IV oh, with like really? electric lights and glucose, and like oh. apparently instantly take away your hangover. I'd they they, they like it. come to your hotel room, right? I yeah. think that, nor they like go around on a bus and like you get on it at the hotel and then drive around the strip and then they let you off. Really? I'd rather just come to the hotel room. Why don't I, you me get too, on the bus? Me too. <laughs> yeah. Why isn't there more booze delivery as a, as a business? Legality. You can't know. deliver booze. I don't know. Yeah, like Cause, cause buying, in, in the U.S. You cannot, a, a private citizen cannot legally mail alcohol to another citizen. Huh. So fans out there, if you're looking to mail us alcohol, don't do it. It's illegal. Yeah, legally, you, you have to go through a liquor hey, store. A liquor store <laughs> has to ship it. <laughs> I mean, I mean, what? I mean, what? I mean, what? No, that's why they, they call box stores that'll ship that stuff. Because they should ship those IVs with them as well, just for the next day. <sighs> well, isn't it something more like... Uh, an alcohol distributor can mail you alcohol. Like if you buy it from like yeah. if you buy from a yes. store and ship it to somewhere, that's okay. That's always the best day at the company when a box of booze shows up. Yeah, like something. you get a box of specs and it's like, oh, what's in here? And yep. so it's very we had exciting. we had a, it was back to the Australia thing. A lot of fans would be kind enough to bring us a load of booze right. to the point where we couldn't bring it all back. So we would be lugging it all back. 
And I was walking past, I was trying to get it all on the coach to take back to the hotel with us. And the woman who worked at the convention center was like, is that alcohol? And I was like, yeah, loads of it. She's like, you can't have that here. And I was like, you're going to take all of this off me? And she's like, yeah, no, good point. I don't, I mean, I don't know where I'd <laughs> put it. Funny. I was like, yeah, I'm going to take it. Because you, you guys, you got that talking. I think Joel got that talking, and I got yeah. that talking, too. <laughs> they just, we would show point. back up at the green room for all the special guests to get on the bus to go back to the hotel every day. And, like, everyone would be in there like, oh, look at this nice gift <clears> I got. I got a hand-drawn fan art. Oh, I got a teddy bear or something like that. And Gavin and I would show up at, like, half a fucking liquor store. <laughs> <laughs> and all the other special guests were like, all right, then. Hey, yeah. then. Like, hey. We, by the end of that trip, we got to be so fucking popular because we would show up every day with bottles of booze. Yeah, it would be because we couldn't take it all. So as we got to the green room, we would try and, like, pour it all out into these Dixie cups and stuff. We'd be like, oh, Trisha Elf, I have one of these. Blah, blah, blah. We'd pass it out. <laughs> like, You're right, saying bartender for Trisha Elf. <laughs> yeah, I, don't know, I don't know that Trisha Elf ever took a drink or anything like she that. Took, she took one. She took that chocolate weird stuff. I don't know. But, oh, yeah, we had this chocolate. Chocolate, like, <laughs> it was like, this guy brought us this thing, it was like from a New Zealand chocolatier, or was it Australian? Anyway, uh, but it was like a bottle of, like, thick chocolate liquor, liqueur, and it was, fu- it was awesome. It really? was like, it was one of the best things I've ever had. We gave had. some to Vern Troyer as well, and I was worried that it might kill him. We had to, uh, <laughs> we had to, um, uh, like, we opened it, and then the chocolate was solid on top, we had to pop through the yeah, cork oh, of chocolate awesome. to get through this, like, stuff. It was I heard so the guy hears that. His gift not only made it to you guys, but made it to Trisha Helfer and Vern Troyer as well. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that that made, was talking about. That is a great example of. Um, by the way, Vern Troyer is an enormous college football fan, huge Michigan fan. I would Michigan have, fan. Michigan. Never would have guessed that. Fan. Yeah, he talked talk. about coming on the podcast. Yeah. He talked about it like during really? college football season. On the podcast, and how he he plays PlayStation over Xbox because the controller is smaller in his hands. Yep, huh. makes sense. No, yeah, we really? never talked about that on the podcast. Yeah, we did. No, maybe roll the tape maybe when we first got back. But that was like, we talk about like the different like, not levels of celebrity, but the different like scopes of celebrity, like that are like these, the segmentation is like, I was talking to, um, Trisha Helfer was, she was on Battlestar Galactica. She played number, number six. six. Gorgeous woman. Just absolutely. Beautiful. Like, yeah. Probably one of the most beautiful people on the planet. And, uh, and that part is like unbelievably sexy. And then there was somebody else in the conversation and I asked her, I said, sorry, what, I said, what do you do? She goes, oh, and I. I forget her name right now. She goes, I play the voice of the female Commander Shepard. And I went like, <laughs> Like, I made this noise. I'm just like, and it was so funny because I'm sure everyone else was like, Fem oh, she's the voice in the video game. But it was like right after Mass Effect 3 and it was Fem Shep. It was the voice Jennifer of the Hale. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, Jennifer Hale. Thank you very much. And uh, that was like, I was like, went nuts because nope. <laughs> here's the voice of Fem Shep right here. And I play a female Shepard character. You do? So. I have one of my, I have multiple Mass Effect saves. <laughs> yeah. I have uh, one uh, female Mass Effect character that uh, is very dear to I'm me. I'm actually running through on Insanity right now, Mass Effect 3. God damn, is that game hard. Did you do Insanity? No, it's one of the achievements and I haven't done it yet. They just endlessly throw stuff at you. Like, because really? you, you'll, you'll be at a new mission and you'll be like, okay, here's the wave of enemies. And you get to the end of it and you're like, Oh my god. And then you walk to the next bit and there's more enemies. And then you die there and you have to do the first bit again. And oh. I'm on the level where you have three different fights. And at the end of it, they threw one of those brutes at you, which has, you know, it's one of those beefy Batarian, Turian things yep. with all the armor. And it's like, there's no way I'm ever going to. I've died 50 times. That sucks. And dude. I keep slamming my controller across the room. And because it's a hardwood floor, that thing goes for ages. <laughs> you know, I lost two saves when I moved from a USB stick to cloud. Because I worked off a USB stick for so long and I would transfer <coughs> my saves to one hard drive that I had. Uh, and I don't know what happened. When I made the transfer, it's like I, got re- I lost the memory stick when it didn't matter so much to me anymore. But I hadn't transferred all everything to cloud yet. And I lost my Mass Effect 2 save, which was fucking huge. Ugh. And then I also lost my flock save. Oof. So I had to re-perfect all the single player levels Ugh. before I could get those achievements. It was like games. upgrading an iPhone. Right, Ryan Ugh. came in this week and he said, oh, by the way, guys, if you ever want to, you can back up your USB drive, no problem. Like with your Xbox saves, it's basically you can plug it into a PC and there's one hidden <laughs> file that's all of your Xbox stuff. And you can just duplicate it and just keep it like backed well, you, up. Isn't that common knowledge? Is it common knowledge? Yeah, I thought it's on the memory common stick. knowledge. That's like well, saying, it's, a, it's a hidden file. You it's a hidden file, it. though. Yeah, it's but like you, you know, know that there's data on there. Or yeah. put it in the cloud. Or, I'm I mean, just saying. But I mean, still, like, have something locally. Like, all right, something were to happen, I've I don't got trust it locally. To this day, I still don't. No, Why? It's, it's knobs. Oh. Like, I will take an example. We were doing the DRM test um, here with the Xbox for the, the patch. patch. Yeah. And uh, we showed how, on the Xbox, how DRM works and how PS3 it works. Current generation DRM. And I was showing Borderlands, and I loaded my game up, got the cloud save down, was playing the game, we disconnected it, but we never reconnected it. So my cloud... 
game is living on that Xbox. I gotta find that Xbox in the studio somewhere. It's right there. So I you're got, having the thing that I'm, I was I gotta, about. I gotta log in because I don't know where that Xbox is. Yeah, that's oh, funny. So, because I didn't reconnect. But look, the cloud saving stuff, I just got PlayStation Plus, so I don't know. It's a little different on there. <coughs> on PlayStation Plus, you can specify, yes, I want my saves of this game to go to the cloud, but they don't go every time you play like they do on Xbox. You set a two-hour window every night, but it does, the cloud service there does way more stuff than the quote-unquote cloud stuff on Xbox. Uh, on the PS3, uh, it'll do all your game updates, every game you have on your hard drive. It'll go through and do updates for them in that two-hour window every night, uh, and, or whenever you set it. And it'll also do system updates as well. And then it also syncs your that's cloud. So on the Xbox, cool. well, that being, said, that being said, on the Xbox, I wouldn't care because game updates are so quick. Yeah. Right. On the PlayStation, which takes fucking forever, that's a big deal. Unless you hear about a like in this particular case, a update that bricked the systems. Oh, so you're talking system firmware updates? As I well, believe it does game? system updates too. Oh. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. So, but I literally just got it. So I might be talking out of my ass a little bit on so that. So I've had a PS3 <clears> since <throat> launch, but. Whenever there's a multi-platform game, I always default to the 360 just because... Why is that? That's where all my friends play. Okay. Um, I do and it solely as, because of achievements. And it, Well, as dumb as it sounds, I don't care about achievements, but I prefer to play on the 360 because of them. I don't, I don't, like, I don't brag about them, I don't go out of my way for them, but I like having them and knowing a record of what I have done. You're right. That's it. I like my game history. Right. So, really, I only use my PS3 for exclusives. Me too. Um, it's all so, Naughty Dog. Yeah, essentially. So because I just use it for exclusives, I've never had the desire to like upgrade to Plus. I've done some multiplayer stuff, I guess, on Uncharted 2, 3, 3. But that's about it. Yeah, I don't do a lot of multiplayer stuff either on, on, on PlayStation. But I got PlayStation Plus. Those free games, you get free now Saints Row 3. The third. The third, yeah. Uh, Uncharted 3 is on there. Um, oh. God, something else was on there. It's a great game. It's something crazy. It's like a God of War or something on there. Well, they're, yeah, but they're, they're on there now and they're free. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, that's pretty recent. You know, um, the Xbox is starting to do that. <laughs> well, say, that being said, if you 3. have a PS3, you probably got those games already. I get it. Those are big, like, AAA titles. But a year ago, like, the ones that Xbox has put out, Halo 3, that's a really cool, awesome title if you've never played it. But it was also out in 2007. Yeah, that's... that's you know, yeah. Yeah. And Assassin's Creed 2 is the other one. And granted, they're getting started. They've got to start somewhere. Assassin's Creed 2 is good that they're putting out for free because <laughs> I'm someone who's never really been grabbed by that franchise. So now that it's out there for free, I'm going to download it and I'm going to play it. Yeah, Assassin's Creed, God. I tried. I gave 3 a chance. Um, I didn't get hooked in. <laughs> but uh, I, 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 like, now that 2 is available for free, yeah, I'm, start, I'll definitely try the it. Two the 2 trilogy is, is the best. Yeah, the Ezio story, like the Ezio arc between 2, Brotherhood, and Revelation is one of the best written arcs I've ever played in video games. Like, like what we were talking about on the podcast before, where he's one of my favorite characters in video games ever, to the point where when you wrap his story in Revelation... You should do a spoiler cast for Just Assassin's Creed. Yeah. Like, Probably right before Black Flag comes out. But like, like with, when you wrap his story, like, I don't want to play that character anymore. Like, I'm happy, like... I'm done with him. Like, I'm finished. Like, he, they wrap up his story so well. It's like, you know, well, you always want to play as Master Chief. You, you never want to stop playing as Master Chief. Yeah. Why, or something why like that. They... It's like, yeah, I'm done. So, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shut you up. Bernie and I were, were talking about this earlier. So you say, I, I haven't played it, so I don't know how it goes. We're talking about how in storytelling, sometimes your ending can wrap too much up. Yeah. And it doesn't leave anything open-ended for imagination. Where you, can, you contrast that kind of storytelling versus like Last of Us. Which kind of ends at the right time. Yeah. It end, like I feel like a lot of developers would have taken that ending. Well, the game is very long. Ten minutes further. Yeah, the game is very long, and so the I think the ending for Last of Us is very appropriate. Here's a great example too. Uh, uh, James Gandolfini just died, and so I was reminded of the ending of The Sopranos, which that's now what four years ago. So you can totally spoil that. It. Yeah. Yeah, and that ended very abruptly. Yeah. That was Abru the one with the, the Journey song playing. Yeah. In the diner. And, and it he just looks it up, and then it cuts to black. Cuts to black. For like 15 seconds. Yeah, and then it goes to the credits. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Well, I never saw the show. But I imagine if I was watching a show for how many years? Eight years or something? I'd be annoyed at that. I'll be mean, honest, if, if Breaking Bad did that, where it's like Walt walks out of a bathroom and just like looks up, and it's on him, and then it cuts to black, I'd be like, what the fuck? It's like a different even, show. <laughs> uh, yeah, but For I mean, The Sopranos, I thought it was perfect. I okay. thought it was great, too. I thought it was like, like, you think about how you can end a show like that, that is about the be that is probably the best way well, to do it. It's all about tension, right? Like in the whole the whole show, the whole thing is, you know, uh, his character is very Tony Soprano is very much in constant danger 
And so it's always just nerves no. and tension. He's not in constant danger. I but I mean, he's with always, that I mean, he's always, you know, in danger of being getting hit, right? No. I mean, no. no, he's the boss. But that's the whole thing. Like, you want to take out I the mean, boss. I mean, sometimes or, or he's getting in stopped danger, by the but FBI. Like, the, the whole, everyone thought the whole thing of Sopranos was going to see the ultimate moment is going to be when is Sup- Tony getting taken down. Yeah. Either by someone in the mob taking him down, some victim t- coming back for revenge, or the FBI finally catching up to him and taking him down. And you don't know. Yeah. You the don't way, know. The way I see that is just the the creator of that is just dooming himself because everyone for the rest of his life is going to be asking him what happened there. It kind of goes like hand in hand with the ending for Lost. Yeah. Which I mean, people hated. Well, and, I thought and it was show, fine. I, it, I guess it was. It kind of was, but... It was totally fine. <laughs> they brought... I, I, they definitely had the problem with Lo- in Lost where there were too many loose ends and too many open-ended stories that weren't able to be wrapped up appropriately. Yeah. But overall, it's, it's fine. Sometimes I just like a real good ending. Like the end of Breaking Bad season four. It, you know. That's, that's the that's face. The, the face comes but off. But it's not, also not the end. Yeah. Not the end. But uh, that character been. was the end. It absolutely <laughs> could have been the end. Yeah. I, I thought one of the best, like, if I, I could stop watching the show right here moments was the end of season three of Lost. Which, was, was, was that we gotta go Jack, back? Bearded Jack. We gotta go back? Yeah. Because that episode was a big switcheroo when, yeah. they, when they made the transition from flashbacks to flash forwards. Yeah. That's where I, in my head, old lost and new lost happen. I agree. And I all totally the new agree. stuff is like, man, this new stuff's kind of, you know, and the old stuff is the classic stuff instantly. Yep. No, there was def- that's definitely like a pivot moment for yeah. that show. And I agree. bang right in the middle as well. Mm-hmm. And it was, uh, the, the, like, it was a payoff. I like when they pay off stuff <clears throat> that's big over time. Um, so I like love the hat stuff. What's that? I love the stuff in the hatch in season two of Lost. Where he's pressing this damn button for an entire season, and you don't know whether anything's going to happen, and when he actually lets the thing go down, <laughs> shit goes wild. He's like the whole thing starts caving in, and like stuff's going flinging across the yeah. room, and the magnets going like, Wah! and everyone's like, "Well, I guess it was real. I yeah. guess that wasn't bullshit." I would say the end of season one, where the, with the light coming out of the hatch, it's like, "What the fuck is that?" Like lock banging on it, and then all of a sudden the light bursts out. It's like. Those early oh, seasons God of Lost, damn, I remember so watching good. them when they I were airing. They open. I had no. a lot of trouble sticking with it. Yeah. Like, I felt like it was so slow and it was, see, they I weren't explaining anything and it was driving me crazy at the time. See, I, I got into Lost the third season. That's when I started watching. I watched it on DVD the first two seasons. Mm-hmm. And so I burned through. There's a lot of slow stuff in the first couple seasons. But if you're watching it back to back to back, it moves yeah. pretty no, fast. I started like when it premiered. So it was like, oh, wow. oh my God. I was like, this is the slowest piece of shit in the world. I totally spit on you. There's, nice. no, there's nothing worse, though, than the show where you reach a point to it and you're out because it turns shitty. I have to admit, I had to power through the last season of Battlestar Galactica because there was something at the end of a season that was just so... I, I don't know how to describe it. It's bad. It's I gave bad. up on it. What was you I gave up on it. Gus never, gave up on it. I never Chris saw... Chris is plugging his ears because he doesn't want to hear anything about Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> we're not going to spoil anything. How, are you watching it now? Are you, get on the... Get on the, get on the well, I want to hear the thing. Battlestar get Galactica. Get in the sidecar. Get over there. Get, get over there. Oh, I, I Jesus hear Christ. What, what happened? You can leave your headset well, on. Wait, it's wait, funny. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. All right. So, we, so I so look up Chris, and Chris so is holding his ears. He's plugging his ears. He's got his, one headphone on. Why, He's got why a, are you plugging your ears about Battlestar Galactica? I, I want to watch it at some point. I just haven't <laughs> yet. I don't want to he- hear anything. And, <laughs> and, and also, it. wait, wait. A show that's been off the air. Oh, I'll, I'll look it up for you guys. Five years. Yeah. I mean, I'm just now watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Shit. And I and I watched the first three or four seasons of Sopranos, but never finished. But I intend to go back. Brandon at some point. says you do this on every piece of shit you're never gonna watch. <laughs> do what? Brandon says you do this on every piece of shit that you're never gonna. I watch. I never know if I'm gonna watch it. Wait, so okay, I so wanna... you're saying like you, if someone were to spoil the end of Buffy the Vampire Slayer for you right now, you would be really upset by that. No, because if I say that, then people will tweet it at me or something. <laughs> well, uh, we, we've yeah, crossed that point. Yeah, people are dicks, man. But I mean, it's the thing too. It's like that show has been off the air for like six years. I mean, yeah. like, you you have you can't. That's what six Netflix years, is. Buffy's born. been off the air way longer than that, dude. I, I never watched the show. But if like, if someone told me the end of Buffy right now, I would not be crushed by it because like I know that show came out forever ago. Yeah, but it's like okay. I, you know, I watched stuff on Netflix. It's like, oh, I've, this is a good show. I never watched it. I'm gonna watch it. Like same thing <laughs> we were talking about Lost, and I was like, oh, hey. I, you know, can I borrow your uh, Blu-ray? Because I never watched it. And, Do you no. want to borrow my Blu-rays? Did I say I was going to bring them in? Yeah. I'll bring them in. I'm sorry. <laughs> I forgot. No, it's okay. I've got Buffy now. No, no, no. I'll, I'll bring it in. Here, look. I'm going to set a Siri reminder right now. <laughs> All right. That it doesn't work. I bet she 
buggers us up somehow. Remind me when I get home to get the lost Blu-rays. <laughs> Does that location reminder work for you? Yeah. That never works for me. Have you set your Here's home, though? Reminder for when you get I don't home. ever say home. I say it worked and stuff like that, too. But what, you doesn't know where your work is. Here's your time. reminder for when you get home. That's she set awesome. it up. All right, I got it. All right. Uh, so we'll talk about it in a non-spoiler fashion about Battlestar Galactica. Right. Even I though you were so smug <coughs> on the Game of Thrones spoiler cast. So but I didn't, you. Yeah. But I didn't spoil anything. No, you so didn't. So you but, get to that point. It's like, what, season 4.5? In Battlestar Galactica, yeah. Uh, we're at the end of season 4 before 4.5. Right. And that final episode where all along the Watchtower starts playing. There you go. I gave up. I was like, I'm, I, I, I've never watched that last half season because I was, I get I was so checked out I get at it. that point. I, to- I mean, I totally get it. That last, it's so like out of nowhere and just like, yeah, uh, it's, it's iffy. It's annoying when the same show does that. Like, I can imagine finishing a show and then there's a spin-off that just doesn't work for you. But when in the middle of a show, it makes you want to turn it off instantly, I hate that. I think I had that with... It wasn't a very good show, but I watched the whole first season of Heroes. And, oh uh, my first, god. The first season was good. And it was alright. Second I was like, season was terrible. I was like, yeah, I'm into this. And the second season happened, I was like, ugh. It was like the last what two the minutes of the last episode of the first season, you're like, yeah. what? What? Well, you know, what? The, hero, the big problem with Heroes is... The whole season is based around this vision of them in the middle of the street, and there's huge traffic jam, and they're running up to what's the name of the guy with the hands? The uh, Siler? No, not Siler. The good guy. Yeah, the what's the Milo the Ventimiglia? Milo is that his name? No, no, that's, no, just, that's the actor. Anyway, we all know the character. The, 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 he absorbs other people's powers. The, the yeah. guy. Yeah, Peter. Peter Petrelli. Peter. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's the vision they keep seeing, and like the cheerleaders going over a car, and they keep showing the same vision over and over again. Then when they get to that moment at the end of the season that they've been leading up to the whole time, it's totally different. And it's in the courtyard for an office building. Yeah. Where yeah, the, it's just like... It's like, why it, would you keep showing a, that scene over and over again? It's beneath a skyscraper. And then yeah. everything happens kind of not really how it was. Did they not think to film the actual scene when they shot the... The, 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 the flash that was the words stuff? to it? That the was the sad one. The first one was saving the cheerleader, which was the mid-season Yeah, save the cheerleader, one. save the world. Yeah. Which kind of was the same. The, the whole thing, like, the thing that was bugged me... Those were great characters, though. Oh, great yeah. characters, when that show initially started, great. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, uh, like, like, Hero, I, like, the, 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 the Asian dude, like, that was an awesome character. That was a great villain, too. That being said, that Siler. show Siler. has some of the worst product integration I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. There's some but shit. Watching, that watching, product placement. watching uh, who's the, the Japanese dude. Yeah, it was Hero and... Ando. Ando, yeah, yeah. Nissan Versa. Yeah. Look, Nissan Versa, Ando, Nissan Versa. Like, oh, come did, on. Did you ever watch, did you ever watch Brought Chuck? Brought to you by Onnit. <laughs> did, you, did you ever watch Chuck? Great product. <laughs> no, uh, no, I never watched Chuck. Chuck, they, they did a whole thing with Subway, where it was like the most blatant, obvious advertising, so much so that it was, I was okay with it, because they, they were just ridiculously yeah, it, bad it, about it. You've got to admire it when like, it's... Mm, this 12-minute <laughs> Subway sandwich is so delicious. And it was like, what? Are you kidding me? One of my all-time but, favorites was in the uh, video game uh, Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. I think the third one. Yeah. And um, I don't know if you have it, it here. Is a phone but or something? No, there's a, maybe. There's, do you have that chewing gum called Airwaves? No. no. Well, <laughs> in the UK, we do. I'm not, it might have been a different version then in, in the US one. But in the opening cutscene of Splinter Cell Chaos Theory, there's just a giant blimp that says Airwaves on the front of it. It's like massive in the frame. It's just floating there. Like the first 10 seconds, like, why, what is this, what is this massive blimp I'm, doing in the middle of the city? But I, I think in-game advertising is okay because Outdoor advertising is a part of the real world, so okay. it's like yeah, yes, like, but there are some examples that go against that. Like I remember playing Rainbow Six Vegas. Yes, that like was a, a f- massive. They were the guys who did that. Yeah, there's an opening scene where you're like going down the street and you can shoot up all the cars and they all blow up, but you get to like a Dodge Nitro that's like elevated on a stand and it's got lights on it. And if you shoot it, like none of the bullet holes take. You can't blow it up, and it's like, okay, this car is obviously different than every other car on the street. No, I see. I think the thing I remember cool. about Rainbow Six was the fact that <clears throat> they had movie posters, and they would update. So mm. you'd be like, you'd be like mm-hmm. in a college, and there'd be like, you know, like an advertisement for a movie, and it was like The Hangover. It was well, like that's a real, fine. It was a real. No, that's cool. Yeah. Or even like, um, like. Well, uh, it not, well for two reasons. Or like one, obviously it's an advertisement, but two, it like it makes the immersion better. Yeah, it's immersive yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's like, oh, well, that's a movie I would really see <coughs> yeah, a poster like, like for. Yeah, right like Burnout now. Paradise. You're driving around, you know, Paradise City, and they have billboards, and it's like billboards for real stuff, and it's like, oh, like okay. on it or Hulu. Yeah, like for instance, if I'm just gonna name <laughs> two things, or Ultra things. Glide Vaginal Moisturizer, <laughs> Astro Glide. Oh, was it? Well, Get it right. What I, what I Ultra Glide, <laughs> Ultratron, Vaginal Moisturizer. <laughs> I'm really not up to date but, on my moisturizer. No, I'm cool, I'm cool with in-game advertising as long as it's very, like, you know, it fits. Um, yeah, totally fine. It, yeah, so that, that stuff I'm, I'm, not, I'm not bad about. Yeah, like, totally, okay totally fine. Like, developers. As long as it's done in a way 
like the movie posters that yeah, increases exactly. the immersion and yeah if you're if you're playing you know, you know if you're in a theater dude or something there is shooting a, each other and see, see, speaking of stuff that like increases the immersion in a video game last of us no spoiler here last of us has a very simple thing that happens in it that is so unbelievably immersive i don't know why i connected so heavily with it and it's hard for me to explain but you have this girl. Everybody knows Ellie. She's on the posters. We should talk about... Maybe we'll talk about the patch. We should dedicate some more time to it. About Ellen Page and her fuss oh, right, about yeah. Ellie yeah, came being out. based on her. Yeah, Ellen Page, the actress, says that Ellie, the character... Yeah. It's even named Ellie. Ellen and Ellie. She, she did a Reddit AMA today about... Then she mentioned it in the... Well, room. somebody asked her. You yeah, can't say well, she mentioned it. Yeah, she responded to somebody asking yeah, a tough question. Anyway. Which I, I like when people do. Um, they actually respond to, to tough questions. Anyway, in Last of Us, um, as you're walking around playing the character Joel... Ellie's always around you. She's like Elizabeth in Bioshock Infinite. And when you're sitting there looking at stuff, Ellie's a kid. She's a kid. And so, like, you'll hear her behind you, like, messing around with stuff and going, like, she, and she's going, um, I don't even know the song she sings, but she goes, ba da 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 ba da 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 Like, she just starts, like, humming to herself yeah. behind you. And you're like, it's the weirdest, the way the actress, voice actress does it is so perfect. It's just, like, it's so natural. And she just, like, this, like, well, tonelessly singing to herself. It's, like, huh. weird. I, I feel like she also delivered dialogue really well. Like, there's a scene where... I don't know if you go through it. You don't have to go through it to complete the mission, but you can alternatively, in one of the levels, go through, like, a coffee shop. And uh, she has a conversation where she asks Joel, did you, did you used to go to coffee shops, like, before all of this happened? Mm -hmm. and he's like, yeah, I did. And she's like, what did you do there? You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, she's just, like, someone growing up in a post-apocalyptic society not understanding what things were like yeah. before, like, this event happened. Uh, it was no, really so Ashley Johnson was on the show Growing Pains, the who, a voice actress for Ellie. Hmm. She was the young daughter on Growing Pains. Who's the young daughter who's, on yeah. Growing Pains? Who's on Growing Tracy Pain? Gold was the daughter... There was another one? Is there a younger daughter? Oh, was Growing Pains, was that the Michael J. Fox one? No, no, no it's no, the uh, Kirk Cameron one. Yeah. Okay. You're thinking of... Um, there yeah. was... The other one, Michael J. Fox oh, and... Family Ties. Family Ties. Yeah. yeah. There's, a lot of, there's a lot of show sitcoms from the 80s that it was in the period when they abandoned 16mm film for shooting shows and they moved to shooting on video. Yeah. But that window of time, it's almost like the time of like in the late 90s when everyone got digital cameras... But they're so shitty, they're way worse than film, and they look like garbage compared to the high-def cameras we have now. So it's like we, there's this era of crappy pictures yeah. that everybody has. And I think like, like mid to late 80s TV is a lot like that. And there's a lot of shows that just don't make the transition to a high-def world. And it's this weird window. Like I don't think a lot of Cosby show and Family yeah. Ties and Night Court get shown. Yeah, you know what does hold, Those are huge shows. Yeah. What does hold up well that I see in syndication a lot is Seinfeld. Oh yeah, even that was shot on film. It was shot on film. Yeah. Even in HD, looks great. F Friends well, was the same way. They deliberately shot it for the future. Yeah, it's well, like wasn't Star Trek: The Next Generation shot on film? Like it was shot actually widescreen, and yeah, then they, but they the, cropped it down. Well, the problem with Next Generation was that all of their visual effects were created in standard definition. So yeah. when they released the Blu-ray box set, they had to go back and recreate like all of the visual it, effects. Yeah. They could well, scale it up, but they couldn't scale up the visual effects. Well, yeah. but you also get because visual effects then were all optical. So the more times you go through the same piece of film. And the more layers, the more shite can get stuck between well, them. Uh, Star Trek Next Generation was not optical. No. The original, I'm, I'm sure the early stuff may have had some optical elements. We're not talking about the original 60s oh, okay. show. We're not yeah. talking about the Because I know that in, a, in the, all the James Bond movies, which were shot on film, and now today look better than they ever did when they were originally shown in the movie theaters. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But all of the optical effects still look bad because there's just so many layers of dirt and stuff that you just can't get rid of. Yeah. No, it, that, that's the funny thing about film. And that I, I'm glad we're switching to digital for projection is you don't get that. There's no like generation loss. Yeah. There's no like this film's been run through the projector 50 times. You, it's got, like, was, um, you don't like seeing a little hair dirt like, in the, the corner on it. Yeah. There, there was an amazing thing. I think it was on behind the scenes of Moonraker or something where they had all these astronauts. It was, there was only a few shots like this, but there was tons of astronauts just floating in space like this. And what they would have to do was all model stuff. They would, uh, they would run the film at really high speed to get like the slow thing, like the effect. Right. Then they would wind the film back. To the, to the beginning, and then move it to a different place. And because it's all black, you can kind of overlay in the areas of black because there's nothing exposed there. So they would keep moving this like, white astronaut dude around until there were like 15 of him. But every time they wind it back, it was like a new generation of exposure on that oh, film. Wow. So by the end of it, it, it was like they'd been working for like 12 hours on one piece of it, and it was like, oh my god, don't ruin it. We've, we've been working so hard on this one shot. 
And if they ruined it at that point, like messed up the exposure or overexposed it, it would ruin the, all of the work. And I can't imagine. Like now. So you talk like, about that guy, that one guy laying down in the long children of men shot who's like, don't fuck it up. Yeah. Don't fuck it up. <laughs> Just so much time. And now that would be, wouldn't even cross our minds. Imagine if every time you went back on the timeline in Final Cut, it degraded the quality. Yeah. Oh my Jesus God. Christ. Terrible to think about that. Yeah. Like I was thinking about like Sgt. Pepper, how um, the Beatles, they made like an, an album where one song goes into the next. We were talking about this because it was a single at the gym and all of a sudden it seems like the song cut off abruptly because it wasn't meant to be listened to as a single, like a track from right. the album because uh, it, it continuously goes from one song to the next. So the, How hard would that have been to do in the analog days? Well, they I'm talk just, about, in specific, uh, with Sgt. Pepper, there's like that Good Morning song that starts with the rooster crowing or like the chicken making that noise because that's like the bleed over from the previous track. Uh -huh. And I forget who the audio engineer was, but they hired like the best audio engineer at the time who could splice reels precisely and they brought him in just because they knew he could splice this chicken cawing at the right moment and make the, put the two pieces of the reel together and to now make a song and now literally anybody in this room anybody probably listening to this podcast could make that edit yeah yeah and that's and crazy it, and, to think. and it's sad to think that there was a a real niche talent there that is now completely yeah. useless it's a guy yeah. with a razor blade <laughs> yeah putting together two pieces of tape yeah, and a, a lot of old movies will have, like, a, they'll have a shot where it's like, you know, a big grand ceiling, when in reality it's a nice set, you know, up to maybe eight feet tall, and then it's just lights. So a guy has to place a piece of glass in front and do a big matte painting that what? joins the gap between the actual set and the rest is optical in the sky. What's funny is... No use for that whatsoever. Well, no. that guy could be a digital artist today who does that he kind of stuff. He was using paint and stuff. Yeah, but glass. I'm sure you can make that transition. That's not a big gap. All What's right. funny is I recently rewatched Coming to America and all of like the external shots of the palace in Zamudia are like obviously like Zamunda. matte paintings. Zamunda. And it's like you, right. you got uh, the movie. Like giant on the spot with names today. I love it. The so, movie right? looks fine until you see like an external shot of the palace and it's like, oh okay, there's a jungle and there's a painting of a <laughs> castle yeah. here in the yeah. middle of it. It's funny. There, there was actually, it's funny you mentioned that uh, Coming to America. There's a line James Earl Jones says in that movie that's a direct pull from Star Trek, or Star Wars, excuse me. It's one of his Darth Vader lines from Star Wars. It's something like, don't, like, don't bother him, I'll learn him myself, or something like that. But it's a line directly from Star Wars that you, they reused in Coming to America. That's funny. Coming to America is still a great, great movie, by the way. Movie. I've never great, seen great it. Great, great movie. You've awesome. never seen Coming to America? No. You would love that movie. That's Sam Jackson's in that movie. He's like one of his first roles he ever did. Yeah. There's a lot of talk on Twitter about the shirt that Gavo is wearing. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. That's, actually, the, that's actually an old Rooster Teeth shirt. Can we get any closer on that one, Chris? It's a 20, 2012 20, World Tour shirt. Yeah, that was yeah, our so convention World Tour we shirt. We made two different World Tour shirts in 2012. We made, like, a Heather Gray version and uh, this black version. Around, and yeah. the back has, like, concert dates, like all the different <laughs> events that we went to. That's not awkward. <laughs> So let's get all, all the different places we went to in 2012. Uh, like all the different conventions. And the, the gray version is also very similar. In fact, um, for whatever reason, last year at RTX 2012, <laughs> we did not have an RTX shirt. We considered that the That RTX was our shirt, shirt that we had. Yeah. Did, uh, all the conventions I went last year, this was the first one to sell out. <clears throat> that one or the gray one? I, I felt like Both the gray one sold oh, more. Yeah. In fact, you, if you have watched the podcast for a long beige. period of time, we had a, that was the shirt that we would yell at Brandon about where he called it beige. He's calling it beige in my earpiece <laughs> no, right now. Fucking idiot. God, I, that's we, Okay, true. so that being said, do we have an RTX there shirt There is year? an official limited run RTX shirt. We do not have very many of them. What does that okay. mean? Why not? Why? <laughs> um, there's not very many of them. But why? What does it make any sense? We're, okay. uh, we're trying to get more printed. All right. Okay. We're so, having capacity issues with the printer. Oh, wow. please. Just use a different one. Um, I got capacity issues so, with your bullshit. So what you're saying is if you come to RTX, you should immediately go buy so that shirt. This year at the Rushi store, we had pro or last year at the Rushi <coughs> store, we had problems with lines. Yes. Uh, and we freely admit that. So this year at the Rusty store, we're going to have two different lines. So when everyone first shows up to RTX, in their bag will be an express checkout order form. So it's a form that just has a couple of items on it. You can check off what you want, turn it in, and then immediately get your stuff. Oh, okay. There's also a second line where if you want to go in and see everything, a more wide selection in the store. Oh, okay. And you can walk around and choose stuff, but the line for that is probably going to be longer. Okay. So if you want... If you know less, like three or four things you want to get, check them off on the Express Or you form. just trust the people that you've come to know and love <laughs> you that know produce what? your online content. I'm really like, excited because last year about this time, 
we launched the Achievement Hunter slap bands. That was a cool exclusive thing that well, started Well, the Achievement Hunter slap bands were... That was the giveaway at RTX yeah, last year. Yeah, they were a giveaway. This year, I think we have a much cooler giveaway. Yeah. We have a very, very uh, cool giveaway. It's pretty awesome. By the way, who the hell knew those slap bands were such a big deal? Yvonne, no kidding, Yvonne totally dude. was like, we should make slap bands. I was like, it was, that was you? Was oh. you? <laughs> it was no. my idea. Slap bands? Were yes. your idea? What, are you 12? Yeah. I don't know. Like, I saw someone with a slap band earlier in the day, and I was like, we should make those. All right. Well, that, there that you go. Gus genius. That was a genius idea. Gus, I, I will, that, that was an amazing idea. It, it, it was like, what? no insight. Like, literally, I saw someone with a slap band earlier in the day. One of the items, or many of the items you'll be able to buy at RTX <laughs> is merchandise based <laughs> on our hit new show, and I'm vamping because he's fixing his hair, uh, Ruby, which is created by our wonderful genius architect. Mr. Monty Ohm, who's here in the studio with we, us we today. We to, 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 to get him here. You have a nice uh, graffiti background, so you have to live up to your hip hop. You got a guy who works on computers and creating 3D environments. You gotta, say, you gotta say everything in 80s rhyme. You gotta sound like a Beastie Boy or a. Uh, Kid like, and Play. Yeah, oh, Kid and Play. Early in the morning yeah, Mon Mon this is Monty's morning. It's uh, We're recording this at, I Mon think, 9 30 p.m. Favorite person. Yeah, he's amazing. He's my he's favorite person. He's amazing. Monty, you're an amazing individual. There's not enough zippers on that jacket, Monty. Uh, you know. So the reason Gus <laughs> why I asked <laughs> Monty to come over here is Monty tried on it. Oh yeah, I did. Oh, get oh up on the mic. Jesus Christ! Oh, yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. yeah. All so right. How'd that go? I'm curious about people's experience with it. Oh, Gus, what the fuck, man? <laughs> on it, I wasn't even sure if Alpha I Alpha Brain. Huh? Alpha Brain. Alpha Brain. Right. I was. I tried it, man. It was. You know, it was good during the day. I was like, you know, cause I don't dream enough. So I was like, <laughs> sure, I'll give it a shot. Took it, to, went to bed. Wasn't sure if I woke up. Still not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I had a message from, Te from, from Bernie still... just now. It's like, come, podcast, on it. I'm, I'm on it. I am on it. Holy shit. <laughs> it's like, uh. So you're waiting for Morpheus to call you right now, basically. So did he, did he give you vivid dreams and all that? Is this, is this, this vivid, is vivid as hell, Martin? <laughs> yeah. are, you, are you here? <laughs> am I here? Dude, is this real life? Can yeah, you start like, flying? I was, I was scared as fuck. I, I, I was like, all right, it wasn't, it, it wasn't just now. It was, like a, it was a, like a few weeks ago, and I tried it, and it was one of those nights where I go into work and no one else is there. I'm like, I got to find someone. I had to confirm my existence. Because, <laughs> like, I was like, I wasn't sure where I was. I wasn't sure what, what, like, what world I was in. And I was like, I need to talk to someone right now. And, of course, no one was at work, so I get to work by myself, and I'm like, but well, you're at work and everything is so accurately work. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, you know, I get to, I get to work and it's usually, pretty, you know, it's usually pretty late like this. Most days, although these days I wake up and, I, you know, it, it depends on, you know, what, the, what per people need me during the day. But, you know, very often I get up and it's like 7 o'clock. Everyone's already gone. I get to an empty studio and I'm fucking rocking it out. But that, that day or that week on it, man, screwed me up. I mean, in a good way. <laughs> Maybe that's the day I came up with Ruby. I'm not even sure. Screwed me up in a good way. Yeah. That's the new slogan. Monty, or how, I, one of the reasons yawning, Monty is yawning, though, is because <laughs> they are working really hard on Ruby yeah. for the premiere at RTX. How are you getting? Are you excited about it? Yeah, we are kicking ass. Team Ruby is uh, busting it real hard. You know, we um, got a lot of guys on this, which they're all really awesome. And, uh, you, I mean, you can bet there's going to be, like, three Ruby panels, one a day. And um, Gus and I were just talking earlier about how we got so much content to show that we're going to need to like just pretty much stream it like all weekend long, which is great. That being, that being said, people will not be able to see Ruby episode one via the stream. Unless you're at RTX. So like, Unless you're at RTX. RTX. Yeah, so Ruby episode one will be shown at RTX, but when that point in the panel comes up for the stream... Um, you're not going to see it. I'm sorry to oh, say. Oh, what are you doing? Going to shut it down? Is that going to yeah. be a replacement video? Monty, something? your work really is being. We like should find a. You and I should make a replacement video. Let's do it. We <laughs> act out. Monty, how does it feel to be that somewhere. valuable? Oh uh, well. We can't even show your work. You're so valuable. You know, I mean, you can only. Con you know, only people can only take so much awesome. There um, you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, it's really technical stuff, right, Gus? I mean, it's just we can't. We, uh, was that the reason? Well. <laughs> we want to make sure it's a special experience oh, okay. for everyone who's there gotcha. in person. Because gotcha. we have our premiere slated for a couple of weeks after Oh, that's RTX, right, that's right. And we don't want to spoil we, that. We, we got a schedule, uh, which, you know, thank, thank God for Kathleen. Because, I mean, I, 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 I mean I'm lucky enough to, to only have to focus on the creative stuff. 
and like the you know all that there's a lot of there's a lot more hands on it than just the creative side i mean this as a show you need you need a, you need a lot more than that so we got a lot of people working on this so yeah you're not kidding when you say a lot of people oh, we were at the yeah. staff meeting today and it's ridiculous how many people are working on ruby now and achievement hunter even the podcast group is getting is getting big today we had uh we had four people start at the company today yep that was that was insane one of which so we should make a, a mention Oh yeah, uh, why don't we come on and say hello? Well, we should make a mention that Lindsay is not uh, working on the podcast anymore. She's the Achievement Hunter now. Yeah, she's, she's, one of us. she's officially Hunter. moved over from the podcast uh, to Achievement Hunter, and we now have a dedicated podcast producer uh, who's going to be working on all the different podcasts uh, that we're producing. This is actually something we've had in the works for a little bit of time now. Which Yeah, it's going to be a big help, which will hopefully fix a lot of the nagging issues that we've had with, uh, with the podcast. There we go. Yeah, we have somebody looking at it like, Full time, yeah, doing that stuff. So it's a weird tweet. Yeah, like a lot of us look at it part time. We have a lot of other things going on, but now we have someone dedicated 100% of their time to uh, helping straighten out a lot of these things. Um, Gus, real quick, can you talk about tickets for should RTX? We, should we say hello to Patrick? Uh, yeah, get up there. Oh, all right. Yeah, say hello. <laughs> While he's so walking tickets over for there. RTX are sold out. What do you want me to say? They're sold out. So like, <laughs> you, if you walked up on day of, you there's you no cannot tickets. buy them. Okay. Uh, that's... Uh, uh, there are a couple of people. Who have gotten really lucky. Like literally, there are three of them. <laughs> We've gotten lucky since we sold out. If someone cancels their ticket and requests a refund, that ticket goes back into the pool. Oh, it goes back into the hopper. Yeah. The person probably has no idea either. Since we've been sold out who have purchased a ticket. Wow. Uh, so if someone cancels and requests a refund, that goes back up. It's possible you can find one. Highly unlikely. Okay. Well, there you go. Uh, so we've got Patrick over here. Who's our new? I don't want to call him a podcast producer because I feel like that narrows oh. the scope of his work. What is he standing? Brain, where the hell did you put him as a background? That looks like a skip. He's out of backgrounds. What is that? Is that a gutter? <laughs> Patrick, step to the what side for a second so we can see. Like, it's my sc- no, no, it's the pictures of oh, birds in my thing. mailbox. There's oh a my bird god, in my <laughs> mailbox. <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on back. Uh, there's a microphone in your mailbox. Yeah. Uh, Watch out for the birds. So uh, Patrick's our uh, broadcast producer. That's broad- the best podcast. way uh, for live productions. Would you say that is correct? Yeah, podcast producer. Yeah. Broad, yeah, broadcast. But the plan is the plan cool is to grow and, and be doing more of our live, quote unquote, set productions. We have live action, which is our narrative live action productions, stuff like immersion and other things that we have in the works. Then we have a lot of set productions as well that we've developed suddenly over the course of the last year since this went live stream. And then we have a bunch of other set productions. Eventually, I would love to see Awu move to a set production. Like you guys come over here to record it as opposed to being in the room. Although, don't mess with something that's not broken, yeah. obviously. So We've done it for almost three years now. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty lazy. So about Patrick it. has a long history working in uh, in broadcast and long television. History. I'm old. <laughs> so we talked about killing television, and uh, we're helping to actively do it by uh, bringing Patrick hiring people over. away from television. So, so Thank please you. bring all that knowledge and uh, help us make an even better product. You got it. You got it. Glad to be here. <laughs> yeah. So we'll be sure to publish his email so people can complain directly to the boss. Yeah. Oh my God. Patrick, welcome aboard. Looking forward to working with you. Thanks, guys. All right. Thank you. Yay. So yeah, um, you know, welcome Patrick, and, uh, and one day you'll be as popular as Alan. Hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> Alan, Alan's the shit, man. And don't rip to, on Alan. And thanks to Lindsay I went for not all ripped the on work. Alan one fucking time. Alan's gonna walk through the door and like cut you. No, Alan. And thanks to Lindsay for all of the hard work she put in for. Uh, Is she here? For Where's a couple Lindsay? of years, she's not. I was hoping she was gonna be here today. She didn't come. No. She didn't even show up for her last day. Her last podcast. Did she show up after the last day of your last job day? This was her last podcast. Oh, oh gotcha. that's my head. Have you ever been? Uh, so, so thank you for for dedicating so much time, Lindsay. Yeah, we, Lindsay's uh, been awesome. Lindsay really has uh, was here every night when we did the podcast. Uh, she worked on the podcast during the, the live shoot, and then right. she would Cash after drunk. that she would take the uh, fucking two hours, two and a half hours. We would uh, be on the live stream. She would edit that down into something that could go on YouTube, on the Rushi site, and then on iTunes and all of our other places where it's distributed. And then also create the link dump and everything else along with it. She did it every single week without fail. Amazing. Lindsay, we cannot thank you enough. And we know that you're going to do awesome things over at Achievement Hunter. What's she working on now for you guys? <laughs> she does a lot of our editing stuff. Yeah? So it's pretty awesome. It's, it's, 
like we've got we got Lindsay and JJ over there now who are helping out with editing where it's like we can not have to focus on like okay who's gonna edit this who's gonna spend a whole day working on this video instead we can now record something hand it off to someone and be like here take this and make something with it they will then turn around like a week later and be like here's your video and then we get to sit back and watch it it's awesome yeah but you guys do that with every video you guys still edit some of your own stuff too no right? we, we I mean we edit the majority of the videos still locally like I mean I'm in charge of like four or five videos a week Gavin's in charge of all the Minecraft well, let's plays and I feel like we should mention that that's a big reason you're not on the patch we'd yeah, love yeah, to yeah. have you yeah wednesday, wednesdays are my like my roughest day wednesday is horse day which is that day can go either super short if i get lucky or it can run really long and so wednesdays are like the, the toughest day for me to get away from my computer of course that's nope. the day you guys pick to uh, no no brandon we're at over two hours <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, Gus that's gonna the, freak out here in a little bit yeah that's that's the day you guys pick to, to stream the patch yeah. which i would love to be on the patch and i think the patch is like a perfect show for me to be on because there's a lot more informative and a lot more topical and as a matter of fact we talked last week when you were doing the drm stuff with the ps3 and the xbox that was awesome like that was really really cool stuff want to do more kind of stuff like that yeah, yeah. i like that kind of well, stuff and I was, that's why you said we don't do reviews i was like being very careful because yeah we're, with the patch we're moving into more stuff like that well, so and then another cool thing about more informative. that that i feel like i should just mention in passing is like we've reached a point with our technology setup here where we were doing that demonstration here live, you know, as yeah. we're talking about it. And I had an iPad and I was like doing video switching from it. Oh, that's cool. So like here on the set, I was choosing oh, wow. that's tough. like what we were cutting to. That's, that's pretty really badass. Cool. Uh, but. Because our, our video switcher opened up uh, their SDK oh, nice. and our third party developers are making like iPad apps and other things where you can, uh, you can control it. Well, yeah, the patch is very cool. I got to sit in on one episode <laughs> and I'd like to sit in on more when, when I am free to. Hopefully we so. can. One anyway. of the things that we're doing with live streams, and this might affect actually, and you guys can determine um, what you guys think about this or tell us what you think about it. Um, one of the things we're doing more is that the podcast, this podcast debuts at, or goes on the air at 7.30 Central Time. Yes. The patch goes on at 4 p.m. Central Time, and the spoiler cast, which this week will be World War Z, uh, is at noon Central Time. So we stagger them for, and I, we did, we, Gus and I sat down and did all this stuff to determine when it airs in London, when it airs in New York, and when it airs in Sydney. Um, also Melbourne, just so we don't offend anybody, and Wellington. So, so uh, you'll be able to catch at least one of them live. Yeah, so that you're yeah. not like, the people in, in the UK are, when this thing starts at 7.30, it's 1.30 in the morning there. Yeah, um, which so, is rough for Monday night. Yeah. yeah, so we staggered it, but then we wanted US audience to be able to watch it after. One of the things we're noticing, though, about the late podcast, and I'd be interested to know what the audience thinks about this, this is the late podcast starting at 7.30, is that most of the people are gone. <laughs> and so I specifically asked some people, I asked Katie to be here tonight, and then Monty, I, luckily I got hold of him and asked him to come over, and he did. We want to use that sidecar hot seat a little more um, than we have been. And one of the things that makes it easier is if we record the podcast during the business day. Because then people can watch the live stream and if we start talking shit about them, then yeah. they can just come over and go, right. no, no, fuck you, or whatever. That's what I'd really love to do, but a lot of times they're at home texting us, telling us, no, no, yeah. fuck you. Maybe, maybe we can change the schedule up down the road. So I think some point in the future, I think you might see the RT podcast being held earlier in the day for the live stream, which is really a small percentage of the people that watch yeah, it. Yeah, super The podcast tiny. is a weird entity because very small percentage of people watch the live stream. Uh, a smaller but bigger, a small but bigger percentage watch the video version of the YouTube. And the majority of the people who watch uh, the, or consume the podcast are doing it on audio. So. Audio, yeah, yeah audio is like, for this podcast, audio is king. Yep, yeah, all the iTunes stuff and everything like that. So it's like, it's, it's a, all these things are weird products. We don't really know how the patch and uh, spoiler cast live yet, but definitely the RT podcast is mostly iTunes, mostly download audio. I used to, uh, I used to save, b before I moved here permanently, I used to save them for commutes and stuff. Yeah. I would argue too uh, that even people watch it on video, if they don't just sit there and watch it for two hours straight. I don't think they do yeah. that. I think it's one of the things they turn, tune, tune in, leave it on, and listen to it, and then if something comes up video-wise, they just turn and look at it. Yeah. yeah. You know, like that. So. All right. Well, we are over time. This is one of our longest podcasts ever. Hey! hey. Welcome, Patrick. You're editing Where this. are we going to go to eat? Yeah. Um, so uh, thanks, everyone, for watching. We'll be back on Wednesday with The Patch, Friday with uh, Spoiler Cast, and next Monday with RT Podcast and uh, let RTX me, Let me throw this that. in your guys, Is quick. RTX next week? Shut up. All right. Jesus. Thank do you, it. Lindsay, very much. Monty, thank you for joining us I'm tonight. I'm going to do it really throw hot. Throw it, dude. and then we're, we're done. It's going to be so hot in my heart. Ready? <laughs> Alright, bye! <laughs> oh. Oh. One word, one hour. It brings us together, it makes us joy, it makes us laugh.
Yeah.